they gave me my baby and I looked at her like I was it's so bad to say but I was very disassociated from her that I didn't even realize that was my daughter everyone i'm your host alanized and this is noche de pendejadas your favorite talk show turned podcast and donde yo traigo a tus influencers favoritos para chismear y posiblemente sacarle sus trapitos al sol please help me welcome my guest tonight no es una pero son dos fabiana y aileen hey. hello 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 hi pookie Amiga, we're good. How are you? Can I just say, you guys, this has been a while in the making. I want to say like over a month. When the fuck did you send the message, Fabiana? No, in yeah, the beginning, beginning of January. In I the think. Be- oh, was it no, mid January? Like mid January, I think. No, me acuerdo, but it's been <laughs> over a month. Yes. You know, no viven aquí, you guys. So we were trying to figure out my schedule, their schedule. Yeah. Pero finalmente las tenemos aquí. They landed from Houston <laughs> yesterday. Let me tell you. We first of all, we woke up late, y'all. Late. Um, we were only 20 minutes from the airport. airport? I was going to say hospital. Oh, God. <laughs> from the airport. And, you know, you have to be there like two, two hours, hours before because TSA takes forever. Yeah. And as a lot of people know, I'm not from here. So my passport, I went into the TSA, long, TSA line and my passport wasn't scanning. So I'm like, okay. So I'm like waiting for immigration to come out or something. Cause <laughs> like, I wasn't yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I got nervous. I was like, oh, shit. Like, this is it. This, I'm not going to be able to go to the podcast. I was nervous. But then he was like, I think they put your birthday wrong. And you put my birthday wrong. Oh yes. my God, did I? I told my cool father I'll send her up. No, I'm like, someone's waiting for you at the airport, babe. Yeah. It felt, I was like, is this a setup? No, I was kidding. But then, um, we're we like went, running late already. So oh and the TSA line was up. so yeah. long. I was like, oh my God, I'm was not Was it a hassle? It? I'm so fucking yes. sorry. It was no, our no, fault that in was general. quick though. Like, that was a quick change. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. she just, oh, the, who, like, who You put 98 instead of 99. Oh, you know. Well, I put 98 porque yo soy el 98. Ah. A lo mejor me confundí. Andaban las nubes when I was breaking. You know what's funny? Por eso te mandé the like, hey, can you confirm and everything? I'm dumb because I confirmed it too. So I no, guess I didn't even look. She didn't even look. She didn't look straight. She didn't look like book. Let's go. Pero lo bueno que están aquí. Lo yeah, bueno yeah. que lo hicieron, you guys. Lo bueno que no está en otro lugar. Wherever the fuck immigration was going to take her. Lo bueno no, que está aquí en mi salita. Back to Colombia. Mira, <laughs> wait, you're Colombian. I am. Oh my God, wait. Are you Mexican? Well, I was born in Houston, pero mi familia Oh, yeah. that's crazy. Yo te hacía mexicana. No, I was born in Colombia. She talks like me, por eso. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, 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 she's mexicano. Pero, amigas, antes de que empecemos con el chisme, yo quiero mandarles a ellas el micrófono para que se introduzcan un poquito más. My name is Fabi. I'm 24, and I'm a content creator. So I do, like, Instagram, and I do um, TikTok. I'm still trying to get on YouTube, so y'all just hold <laughs> off on me, please. And my name is Eileen. I'm 23 years old. I'm a content creator, thanks to my girlfriend, Fabi. <laughs> I just... We do a couple of stuff. Everything that's worked out for us has been TikTok, Instagram, and like she said, YouTube. Mm, yeah. We're trying to grow there. <laughs> y en verdad que si, amigas, si ustedes las siguen o si las han visto en su For You page, las han visto everywhere. When I tell you guys, I posted like, oh, who do you guys want to see on the podcast? Fabiana y Aileen. Puro, puro que querían verlas y pues aquí se las traje, amigas. Shout out amigas. to the Pookies. No, Literally, wait, talking about Pookies, where did that come from? Because I know you start all your videos, hey, Pookies. Yeah. Donde salió eso? Her best friend Josh used to say Bookies. Okay. And I've never had like an intro because I see a lot of influencers that start off like, start off like that. So I'm like, I need an intro. I feel like that just engages people to watch yeah, your videos yeah, because yeah, they're like, yeah. okay, that's her intro. So like, let me not say Buki. I was like, let me just say Pookies. So I did it with one and people started saying it more. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna just stick to this shit. Yeah, I'm gonna just do it. What a Pookie game. Yeah, so yeah. It literally became a thing. Yes, oh, yeah, start, yeah. yes, Every single video you guys start, lo empiezan así. Yeah. Obviamente ustedes tienen Hey Pookies, yo tengo mis pinches pendejas. Yes. <laughs> it really is a thing. It's kind of like, les tienes que poner un nombre a tus amigas. Yeah, you know, you're in a relationship they with love them you, like that. So it's like, let me call you something. So that way, like, yeah. engagement is so much better. Especially like, because I feel like, you know, we don't, you don't know all your followers individually. So obviamente no le va a decir, hola María, hola Juan. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, <laughs> sure. Like, you yeah. have to call them un nickname para que ellas se sientan como que, okay, me está hablando. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Yo quiero empezar con <laughs> el chisme, amigas. We're two shots in by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're about to be the third one right now. Should we take an hour for the chisme? Let's do it. 
going to take our third shot, you guys. Shout out to them porque me trajeron una botella, amigas. They asked no, me what my favorite bottle thank was. Thank you, like, literally for this. Like, for flying us out, booking hotel. Like, it's yeah. literally... A her, dream. Oh, it is a dream. Me, but I start so. crying. Oh, my God, amiga. <laughs> I know. I usually mm. gag, but this bottle is good. I like that. Yeah. I actually love that bottle because I feel like it's one of those bottles that doesn't give me a hangover. Oh, really? really? But you guys, look, I'm not going to lie. You guys, when the gente me pregunta que es mi favorito tequila, I'm always like, oh, I'm down for anything. Because I really am yeah, down for yeah. anything. You know what I mean? Like, I'm Say a cheap Patron. drunk. Oh, yeah. I won't like Patron, Patron. Patron, I cannot do it. That's one of my favorites. Oh, hell no. No, I it gets me a hangover God. bad. Like, really I just, bad. I, gag, I feel like, like the age is just catching up to me already. I'm you like, know what's funny? At my birthday party last year we had over like 60 bottles of Patron and then we also had like the normal like the Costco tequila yeah yeah a lot of people were asking more for like the Costco tequila yo como de que wey yo me quedo un chingo de Patron no casa amigos that's what we like now I like 70 el que les mande that one's good that one's good that one's good I feel like you know who got me into it the Murillo twins oh oh Brittany and Brianna oh cada vez que las miraba en una fiesta Siempre traían ella su botella personal. Like literally, we would go out to a party and they would and, come oh, in with yeah. the bottle. But it's bottle. smooth. It's really it's smooth. smooth. I, I think, think that's chill. Right. También chill tequila is always better. I'm gonna just take it back home. I think. Ah, yeah, <laughs> <exactly. laughs> no, pero es verdad que si yo quiero empezar con el chisme, amigas. Y obviamente ahorita yo quiero conocerlas un poquito individually because obviamente no se conocieron de niñas chiquitas. Yeah. Yo quiero saber cómo eras tú, Aileen, y cómo eras tú, Fabiana. Growing up, ¿cómo fue su infancia? Honestly, obviously, I was born in Colombia. I was raised in Miami. My parents had money until I think a certain age, until like maybe I was 12 and we moved out of uh, Miami. So once we came to Houston, I think around that time, around 12, like we literally had nothing. Like before coming to Houston, we lived in a 18 wheeler, six of us and a dog for like three months. She has three siblings, right, baby? Yes, three. Yes. So, have, en cuarto? Yeah, no, it's, it's like, like their bunk beds. Oh, shit. Yes, because her dad was, was a, truck a truck driver. driver. He was a truck driver. Oh, we had in his truck. Yes. Yeah, they would travel like that, yeah. Oh, well, shit. Yeah, we had gotten evicted before we moved out. So we left, and then we lived in there for like three months. After that, we were pretty much homeless. Bro. We would take showers at the gas stations. We were, But it, it, was, it wasn't that bad. I mean, I was with my family, and we were traveling. We went up the whole East Coast. We came to Houston from New York. I think your parents made it seem like y'all were good. Right? Yes, they and did make it seem like small, that. And also, you were small, so it felt so like yes. routine, so yes. like normal. Yeah. yeah. And like, I was ooh. seeing so many new things. I was like, I didn't think about anything like that because I was so young. Like, money wasn't a problem yeah. to me. Yeah. But yeah, we really didn't grow up with anything at that time. Houston was a struggle. My dad was always behind on the bills. I was never able to ask for money. I had to work at a young age. As soon as I turned like 15, 16... That's when I started working. I started making my own money. But again, like, I had to give my parents money yeah. as well. So, I mean, to me, I know how humbling it is not to have anything. And now that I do, like, influencer stuff, I don't know how to act when I yeah. do have the money. You know what I mean? So, it is sad, but looking back at it... She gives a, a lot. Yes. Like, ella si tiene the last penny, she'll give it. Like, I do. seriously. Because like, money's not an issue yeah, to me. Yeah. Like, I came into this world alone. I'm going to die alone. And if I, God forbid, something does happen, where's that money going to go? It's not going to go anywhere. Yeah. And also, you didn't have, like, a bad life. You felt like you were, you know, it wasn't my enjoying period, yeah. your life. You know, eras una niña. So you know what it's like to not have money and you knowing that you're going to be okay. When you started working, nos cuentas un poquito de eso. Y empezaste a darles, obviamente, dinero a tus papás. Did that come from the heart or was it kind of like your parents like, mija, ya estás trabajando, nos tienes que empezar a dar? Hey, yeah. Yeah, it was more of like because at that point I was like damn I'm making my own money now I can like go out with my friends because my friends would be like let's go out and I'm like oh I don't have any money like yeah. not even $20 I could have asked because that was something they needed so I'm like no I can't go and some people be like I'll pay and you know it's embarrassing like having to tell your friends I don't have any money like my parents don't have money but yeah mostly it would be like oh like baby girl like you're working now like you know I need it sometimes here and there you know I'll give it to them if they need it now I'll try to do my best with my mom like you if always, she needs yeah. it I will 100% do it That's like, like I will go broke for no, my mom no I, yeah, yeah, I will yeah. my mom has gone through so much and I know she's done so much for me so I know I will not care giving her money I'll do it out of like we sent her 100 bucks today yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. she's like let's <laughs> like, <"Guess> tell <laughs> you know what's so crazy though because I feel like 
a lot of influencers, including myself, you know, yo también tengo una historia un poquito similar. We got evicted. That's actually, oh. we were actually talking about how I met Irma and Danny, oh. which are my boyfriend and my best friend. I actually met them because I lived in Santa Ana, which is another city por aquí. No podían pagar mis zapas. I remember they were like three, four months back. Yes. Track. So nos movimos a Anaheim y ahí fue donde lo conocimos. Do you feel like, obviamente nos platicas un poquito que now that you're making your money, now that all these opportunities are coming from um, you being an influencer, como que a veces no te la puedes creer. Yes, especially when people recognize me también. Um, but definitely when money comes into my bank account, I'm like, um, where is this money? So the thing is, I spend a lot of money. I can spend like thousands of dollars in one day. So what I do is I send all my money I make to her. And I literally, I was just telling her the story the other day. Um... I budget myself to like $400 a day. Oh. <laughs> That's how bad I am. Okay, okay. So the other day, I sent all the money I made. I sent it to her and I was like, okay, babe, I'm going to keep $400. So I'm shopping, you know, just swiping the car like I had million, millions of dollars. I go to the grocery store <laughs> and the tab was only like $125. My card declines. <laughs> In front of everybody. And somebody the- recognized me. They're like, Fabiana's broke. <laughs> Literally, I was like, like, no I'm like, this is why you can't keep the money. Like, I'm a money saver in the okay. relationship, so yeah. Yes. But we're soon to join big accounts. It's so much easier than tell yeah. me, tell me this. I'm like busy, whatever. But right now, I'm like, I don't mind her spending her money at all. <laughs> it's just bad. But I'm like, babe, tampoco, like, no te pases. Like, you have to be reasonable. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, but I'm not like that. and b- b- make sure we're good. Like, save up and todo eso. Yeah. So. And the thing is, because I never had that money, so mm. I don't know how to act when I do have money. So I just yeah. start swiping, and I'm and just like. I don't understand. That's why I'm like, I don't spend nothing on myself. Like, yo, she, I have to force her to spend. I, I'm money. like, babe, I don't think I need it though. Like, I don't need it. If she's like, babe, like you deserve it. Do it. I'm like, that would, and even if it's like food, dude. Like, <sighs> if I want like pho, like I'm like, man, I want my No, she can eat noodles for days. Yeah, I can't, so I'll do that. Like, I'm like, I love it, so I'll do it. Pero she's like, babe, just buy it. I'm like, that's that's fine. I'll do it. But, me recuerdan mucho de mí in different stages of my life. Like you, <laughs> Eileen is me now. <laughs> You are me when I started my career because I swear to God, I I will show you guys after this. I have like my bag collection. There is bags in there. Con etiquetas. I'm talking about four thousand, five thousand dollar bags that I've never used. Uh, where's it at? <laughs> 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 no, but I swear to God, like I have bags in there. Que cuando empecé yo a ganar dinero, me compraba nomás por comprármelo. Sí. Because you see the money. Yes. 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 Kind of more like, oh my God. Toda mi vida no tenía ni para yes. estar para un dulce ni para esto. Y ahora que Dios me está, you know, bendiciendo. Quiero gastar hasta lo que no tengo, exactly. hasta lo que no yeah. necesito. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. But I feel like now, you know, after being in this industry for so long, after being like, bitch, el dinero va y viene y va más que viene. Ah, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, I really yeah. am you. Quiero que nos cuentes un poquito más de tu infancia. How was Eileen growing up? ¿Cómo fuiste tú? Uh, Eileen, the chiquita, she was... She had a good childhood, although um, my parents got a divorce when I was eight. So, um, you know, I, I get memories here and there. Like, if I really try to think about a day, like, with my dad and mom being together, like, the only time I remember us being together, I mean, not the only time, but, like, the good memories. The last time they were together. It was yeah. when they took me to Disney World in Florida, Orlando. So it was supposed to be a family trip, and then um, they decided like they were gonna get a divorce. So I remember on mom- the family trip. Yeah, no, 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 no. no not, they had no. already told you it they were gonna get a divorce. Okay. Yeah. My mom was like, "Mija, like it's only gonna be me and you." And like I cried, and I was like, "No, like I want dad to go, like please, like." So my mom and dad did it for me, but they were like friends. Yeah. Pero like I, that's how I knew that like I had the best time when they were friends, man. So it's crazy to me how like. The divorce, obviously, you're hurting. You don't want your parents together. Like, you don't know what's going to happen. Like, you know, papi allá, mami allá, you know. It was the best thing that could have happened because it made me who I am today. They were so mature about it. Uh, they co-parent were very good. If I was grounded at my mom's, my dad, I was grounded at my dad's. Like, my mom me quitaba el teléfono. So did my dad. He's like, I'm sorry, your mom said you did this and that. Like, give me your phone. So that really made me the woman that I am today. But um, my mom, she got a boyfriend like okay. two years after that. So it was hard on me like to, you know, the change of Accepted. like my mom being with somebody else. But he's been the best stepdad ever. Like if I know people be like, oh, your parents got a divorce. But I'm like, dude, I had a good childhood. Like thanks to my stepdad, like he literally deserves to be called dad. I don't call him dad. Uh, he has two kids. So I have a stepbrother and stepsister. Like they call him dad. <laughs> Like, the thing is, they called my mom mom. Yes. Aww. So, to me, it was like, I'm the only child. Like, yeah. I am. So, 
when they started calling my mom mom i was like hey she's me i like yeah. she's mine you know the jealousy was kind of kicking in yeah for like her. the only child like was like kicking yeah. in and then i would see my dad my stepdad and my mom hold hands like men have like my day was ruined like seriously but like he's been the best stepdad since day one ninguna queja tengo de él. like ninguna yeah. que oh him and my mom argue they don't argue dude like it's really the best thing that could have happened because now my dad and my mom are really good friends my stepdad and my dad get along like crazy. Like we have, it's her, the best co-parenting you can. Put. It's a I, very I, I, healthy co-parenting. Like it's very like out of a fairy tale. Yes. Like, like, no, everybody, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's like surprisingly, you know, co-parenting doesn't like work out for everybody, yes. but they do it. Like they're very mature about the way that they do. Like they can hang out perfectly fine. Like see for each her other. daughter, well, our daughter's birthday uh, party, the, her first. Uh, my dad and my stepdad were cooking for us. Yeah, like, together. The just burgers for, the for everybody. Like se pueden llevar muy bien. Mi mamá y mi papá también. Mm. But um, there's times where like. I wonder what life would be if my dad and mom were together. Cause I guess I'm, I got so used. Really? Yeah. She never told me that before. Yes, cause what? like someone someone asked me like if there's one person like or like if there's somebody you could like lastly be with and like who would it be? I was like my mom and the, my dad together. Just cause like Aww. I know my dad's <laughs> such a good like he's a good person. My mom he said like you know. As a married couple, we would fight like cats and dogs. But he's like, I have love for your dad. And my mom, my dad tells me the same thing. My dad, he said, like, I pray for you. I pray for your mom, for Mackie. I pray for the kids. Like, everything. I just, he's so appreciative to that. Well, he's been a good father figure to me, right? And there's times where I'm like, what would my life be like if my mom and dad stay together? Like, what if they didn't argue? What if, like, I would just be with them? Like, you know, everything's so separated now. Okay, I'm used to it. I love it. Oh, it's hectic, though. Yeah. It is so, like, holidays. Oh. Holidays, there's my mom's three side. families, my side and then her dad's side. So we have to literally share being her dad's for an hour, being her my, my family it for an hour. It sucks though, you know, because like, like, you feel like you're rushing to get there. Yes. I'm like, you feel like you can't enjoy the yes. moment. Because yes. you're just looking at the time and, yes. oh shit, gotta go. Yeah, I know, it is. <laughs> I'm ready to go drink more. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it is very much like that, you know. And one thing I, you know, just by hearing your story, algo que yo pienso que mucha gente that are co-parenting don't do that your parents did amazing is accept the fact, your mom was able to accept the fact that your dad was a great father. I but think maybe so, not yeah. a great yeah. part. He was not, a, she tells me that. Yeah. She was like, your dad was a good dad, not a gr good husband. Yeah, yeah. she and even I, says that, like, if he ever needed a liver, she'll give it she to him. She was him. like, si tu papá necesita una, un brazo, she's like, yo me lo corto por él. Because, yeah. like, I think she knows that he's been a good dad, like, seriously. But even, like, they, they're just very good. Like, I'm really blessed. I'm not, I don't want to say I'm lucky. Like, I'm really blessed because you don't hear that often. And, like, I just love all three of them because <laughs> they can go out. We can go out, carne asadas and everything. And <laughs> la pasamos bien, like seriously. So I'm really, I'm blessed. Do you feel like that affected you as an adult now? Honestly, no. Just because my mom, she asked for an apology. My mom and okay. my dad too, separado. Oh, apologize to you. Yeah, she okay, was like, yeah. me pides, como dice, me pides perdón. Like you forgive perdón. me. Yeah, and like, you know, they both told me it's not your fault. She was like, please forgive me for like, us not working it out. To this day, like, she's married, you know, but she tells me like, yo como quisiera por ti estar con tu papá, cause like, you don't deserve that. But she was like, it's the best, cause I know I would've been real broken yeah. if oh, they would've been together. the trauma, the childhood trauma would've been Yeah, bad, and like, 100%. the good thing is my mom did a very good job at like, hiding their fights. Their problems, yeah. Yeah, with this, th there's times obviously, you know, it's, we're parents ourselves, you know, we, sometimes when we have a bad day, it's hard mm -hmm. to like, okay, like, Milani's here, let's not do this in yeah. front of her you know what i'm saying like it's just it's just life you know it happens and my mom was so young so my mom was 17 and my dad was 28 they're 11 years apart yeah so you gotta think about it though yeah, this yeah. back then back in the day was not a big issue you know yeah. what i mean I mean, yes do you feel like maybe that can be a reason oh, why yeah. Oh, yes. my mom yes. was in a different level my dad was already like a different mexicano y todo yeah. i i I don't want to call him this, but I think he was Romachista. Yeah, like, yeah, I do yeah. believe it. Like, whatever. Yeah. He could. <laughs> Looking at it, like, what do you mean? No, he could, he could be like, like what that. do you mean, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. No, but my dad's a changed man. Like, yeah, yeah. he doesn't drink anymore. He goes to church. And, like, I didn't say he have a beer or two, but, like, they're both so, like, healthy now. And I love to see that, that my dad, not, he, my dad never remarried. But he tells me, he's like, as long as I have you, I'm happy. So I'm like, okay, like, that's fine. But, yeah, like, my life has always been good good growing up like i said i think i just i black out the bad parts but i yeah. am healed as a as a like i'm 23 now i am healed because they both asked me for perdon and my mom told me like obviously they, when you get a divorce you go through court but she was like i will never take your dad away from you like whenever you want to see him go look for him like literally i'll drop you off at his house so that helped a lot where if i want to go with my dad i'll be there if i didn't i'll be with my mom so 
it worked out. And I feel like that's a great thing que dices tú, like you've healed from yeah. it because I feel like a lot of children of divorced parents, and I feel like that's something that is super admirable of your parents, que te pidieron perdón sí. because a lot of the time the parents don't think about the children they're thinking yeah. about oh no me quiso or puras peleas sí. or we're not together because he did this she did that and it's like no at the end of the day like whatever After her parents divorced, well, from the story that she's told me, is that like when her dad, when she wanted to hang out with her dad, sometimes he wouldn't show up. Oh. Yeah, and she was, would yeah. feel sad about that. So was like, like now that I'm grown and I'm in a relationship, I feel like I understood my dad because like you tend that you sometimes forget about like, dude, I'm a dad, you know, like. But yeah. I feel like in the moment he's like, oh, pues, I got a divorce, me quiero borrachar, or I want to go with my friends. Yeah. So now that I'm older, I do understand. What he was going through, pero si me dejaba like hanging, like, oh man, yo me arreglaba, I will get ready for him. Oh, my dad's gonna take me out to eat. And there was times where, like, he was like, oh, me, I'm sorry, I forgot, I'm here with my friend. I'm like, so like my mom, five minutes before yeah, the but, pickup time. But yeah. even then, my mom was like, man, yo me, put, me, dice, man, yo me putaba con tu papá. But she was like, I would try not to, like, like, I wouldn't bring it out on you. Yeah. Like, oh, it's okay, baby. Your dad loves you. Like, that's why my mom did all that. So I know that's why, like, I've always had, like, my dad's a good dad because of my mom. Like, yeah. and he's a good dad. He is now. But I know my mom, like, played a huge part in showing me, like, your dad loves you, Amiha. Like, nothing's, like, nothing's going to happen to you. Everything's going to be okay. So, yeah. So Like, she was good with not talking bad on him. Oh, yes. a lot. A lot. Yes. Both of them, though. Both of them. They never talked bad about each other like that. Like, it's crazy to believe. But I feel like... That shows maturity. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They were real mature about the divorce. And, like, it sucks to say, I guess, where it did affect me, where, like, in my family, my dad's side, and my mom's, I'm the, like... I'm the only one that my parents got a divorce. So everybody has their mom and dad, oh, their sisters, whatever. And there's me like, hey, guys, I got to go back to my mom's. Or oh, like, that is true. Yeah. I didn't even think about it like So that's that. where it did hit me like as a kid where I'm like, man, like, you know how lucky, not how lucky you are, because there's times where maybe like shit just doesn't work out, you know, yeah. but I feel like that that's where it affected me too, where I'm like, I wish they were together, but I know everything happens for a reason and I'm, I'm blessed where I'm at now. So yeah. yeah. It also takes a lot of maturity on your level to accept and to really see things for how they are. You know what I mean? Like, because if they would have stayed together and continue being toxic together, maybe you would have not had a great childhood. Yeah, you know exactly. what I mean? Like you would have gone like, through so much shit. My child was real good. My mom and stepdad, I have siblings. Like, Thanks to that, I have siblings now, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, I've always been the only child, so I didn't know how it was to share food, to share a room, share yeah. clothes. Till this day, she still don't. My <laughs> <sister>. <laughs> no, no, my sister, my stepsister, she would be like, hey, Lincoln, I'm brothers. I'm like, no. Like, we need to tell her, like, no. And my mom me regañaba. She was like, hey, like, I didn't, you're not going to be raised that way. Like, I'm sorry. You have a sister now, pero dale, like, yeah. like a mi se te quiere usar o whatever. So my mom always treated us even. My mom has loved those kids, like, of their own i see them yeah. as blood like seriously so that's like i have siblings thankfully because my mom remarried so i'm so grateful for that as well it's great that your parents were able to put their differences aside and really raise you to be like understanding very como te digo, like they really raised you to not really let everything that was really going on consume yeah, you. Yeah, exactly, you know? yes. And I, that is very true. Like, and then it's hard no, as parents. Yeah, like, our childhood is so different. Like, I have That's trauma. what I'm going to tell you. That's how you know we're both raised differently. Yes. Like, we're two and different people. And we see people. it in our relationship. Like, yes. I have a lot of... How does that affect your guys' relationship? Like, it has no, knowing that you guys grow up differently. It has I, I think in the beginning of the relationship, like, Eileen and her mom are like, like this yeah. like I'm talking about very close. To me, I never had that relationship with my mom or neither with my, with my dad. I mean, we were close, but not to a point that I've never seen a healthy relationship with somebody's mom the way that she is with her mom. Mm. So in the beginning, I wouldn't say I would get jealous, but I'd get a, like, I guess it was the word jealous because I was her girlfriend. I'm her girlfriend. So I'm like, okay, like your mom. Yeah. Yeah. Ya pasó de moda. No. So at that time, I didn't know how to feel. And I didn't know how to tell her because yeah. she, she would be like, well, that's my mom. So to me, I would call her like a mama's girl. And I was living at home at the time. Yes. So it was like when we started 
they when we were friends everything was good everything was good until we started dating, dating and she started noticing like I used to my mom like we text Tell each le, other, conta, le contabas todo, todo. Sí, and todo. they would text 24 7 yes. and she was just like what the hell and I'm like to me back then I didn't understand yeah. but now that I'm like you know I I should understand her that she's never had that with her mom not never but like our my relationship with my mom is not like hers oh, at so all. it was hard to understand me know how I yo yes, like, like, what we is wrong with you? Like, like we will break up for like a few hours and then just come right back I'm like what do you mean that's my mom what was the big issue it's not like una amiga que I'm texting 24-7 on the phone it's like it's me my mind yo yes. tengo like like yes I say I'm the only child she's well cause my mom only had one so I was like you gotta understand that too that like that's my best friend. Yeah. Like I grew up with yeah. her as besties, like for real. Yeah. But I will want to say that si me relaciono un poquito contigo, Fabiana, because my boyfriend and his mom son así. Yeah. But I it to the point that when we first were dating, before we moved out, when we were living at my suegra's house, mi novio le contaba todo. Si nos peleábamos, if there was an yes. argument, todo, like, todo, 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 todo. Si me cagaba. Si no, 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 no. <laughs> y yo siempre le decía a mi novio, like I would be like, babe, why are you telling your mom? Because yeah. I grew up knowing that, like, no matter what whether that's your mom and you feel like they're your best friend like si tu hijo tu hija in this case if my boyfriend is telling his mom like oh alan did this or alan yes. me trató así no matter how Nobody close the relationship know. is like la mama va a cargar algo contra mí you mm. know what i mean a ver diferente and at the end of the day it's like si el hijo in this case, my boyfriend no tiene planes de dejarme a la verga. Entonces, ¿para qué me está pintando mal? No, you know there has to be a line. Yes. A line. So, there was a, we, we had a lot of problems, like, yeah. in the beginning. Like, because my boyfriend was like, that's my mom. Like, she's never going to see you different. Like, she loves you. She cares for you. And I'm like, I get it. Yes. But you don't understand what I'm saying. Like, yeah, how exactly. did you feel? I, oh, man. I was literally, I was over it. I was, like, really over it. I told her, I was like, you need to figure it out. And I told her. I that mean, was one of our hugest problems. That was, no, it was really our big oh, problems. We yeah. didn't solve this. I, I kid you not. We didn't solve this until like, I think a couple months ago. No, literally. Yes. It took maybe almost two years until her, her mom and me, like we just, it was just always animosity yeah. when we were together. You know what I mean? And anybody would was able to see it. But I and think I the animosity just came from me. Yeah. Pero también yo le decía cosas a mi mamá y obviously my mom like asked me like if Milani would tell me like hey like he did this to me today oh I would have her back so yeah. I understand my mom if she did feel any way towards Fabi and I know Fabi would feel anything for her I understand 100% now would like, your mom ever like reclamarle a ella like no, any pedos que le no, 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 she would like, never, never do that like, yeah, yeah, she, she never, never do that line we're like no no <laughs> <laughs> no, she just gave me advice because okay. obviously she tells me like, you know, yo tengo problemas que yo no te digo de mi yeah. husband, you know, so now she understands a lot that like, she doesn't choose sides. Like a lot of times she's on nah, her. she chooses my side. I don't know about you. She know. chooses her side now. So like yeah. I'm saying like, they're like, I can't, I'm not going to say besties, but they are besties No, we now. are now. We are. Yes. But yeah, in the beginning I was very, I was jealous. I was. Yeah. And I would literally, I would cry. I would get upset because I'm like, you're choosing your mom over me. And then it was, I was like, I don't want to feel like I'm replacing your mom. Yeah. Yes. And I told you, I was like, I will never make you choose between me and your mom. If you ever came down to it, I would leave. Yeah. Like a hundred percent. So it took me a while to like realize that that's a healthy relationship. Cause me and my mom will argue. Yeah. Like all the time. Anything we were just always arguing, moving out is, and having a baby is what brought my mom close, like together. So with her, like, I will look it up on social media. I'm like, what is a healthy relationship? I was like, because I don't <laughs> like, know. Is this shit normal? No, I'm like, is it normal? So yeah, they'll go on nail dates. And then like, I feel like I took her mom's best friend yeah. from her. Yes, so yeah. I did feel bad. But now, like me and her mom, we ain't out without her. Like me and her are yeah. together. I genuinely do feel like it just comes from a point where like, especially, you know what I w want to say before we actually get into this. You guys are actually my first lesbian couple. Hey. Hey, <laughs> I'm saying this you guys is because I feel like I mean yeah I feel like you guys can relate to I feel like for me and my boyfriend where the problems came a lot was because since we're not like a normal boy and girl couple like we're not thinking about having kids you know como dicen que cuando una pareja se juntan tienen hijos pues esa ya su familia sí. I think for me and my boyfriend it was really hard to be like you know what como dices tú tu mamá ya pasó de moda <laughs> Tu familia soy yo. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, that, that, that was literally all the time. The literally, same like, thing. I'm like, okay, like, you're choosing your mom. And I get it. You love your mom. But, like, yeah. you're over here telling me, like, oh, if anything goes wrong, I choose my mom over you. And <laughs> entonces, ¿qué hago aquí? Yeah, no, I you get know you. You know what I mean? Yeah. It becomes a thing. Yeah. I don't know, maybe that happened no, to it, you it where it was like, okay, then where am I? Yeah. Like, and donde quedo yo? And that's where I was wrong a lot of times. Like, a lot. Yeah, and I, I, didn't, like, I didn't understand back then. But now I'm like, that's where I was really wrong, where, like, I didn't notice. Like, I was like, I was blinded, literally. Yeah. Like, I just thought I was doing right. But the whole time, 
I was affecting her and I was hurting her until like like she said it, like it's lasted for a whole year. Yeah, like it's been a couple year. of months where like we've been good, yeah. like everything's been okay. Our family, like they always loved us and everything. It was just me. Like I would always not put her first, and yeah. that was my problem. I'm not saying like prefer your girlfriend they won't mess over your partner. <laughs> no, okay, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I'm vocal. talking about like when you really are in a serious relationship where you really do see a future yes, with your partner. 100%. Yeah. That's when it really is like okay, like where in your life does your partner come? Because yo siempre he dicho, okay, igual como mis papás se fueron de México y dejaron a mis abuelitos llorando, triste, para que ellos hicieran su vida aquí, sí. so they can raise us. It's the same way que es el ciclo con nosotros. Yeah. Va a llegar un momento donde we're like, you know what, I love my parents, I love them, pero como dices tú, ya vienen secundarios. They're no, secondary yeah. because like now I'm with a partner that I want to be with for the rest of my life. You yeah. know, you guys are mothers, like están con su bebé, so it's like, no. Le quiero dar the position y el lugar que se merece mi, mi pareja. And it's literally just that. No, you know? literally. And it's like, people see that normal. But there's people that don't. And, like, they struggle with, like, who do I put first? No, like, at the end of the day, you're growing up. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to do my life with my mom. Like, yes, my mom's going to be in my life forever, yeah. obviously. Pero... I'm not in love with my mom, you know? <laughs> like, I'm in love with Fabi. So I'm like, that's where I started realizing. I'm like, bro, like, I understand her. Like, I feel weird that, like, not weird. Obviously, my mom's done everything for me. She's made me who I am today, and I appreciate everything she's done. But at the end of the day, like I said, I'm in love with you. I want my future with you yeah, and yeah. Melani. So it's only what's right. Yeah. Like, seriously, yeah. And I feel like that's that's actually a really great topic that we're talking about. Eso no lo teníamos, amigas, en, en las preguntas. But that's really good that you guys brought it because even me and my boyfriend like obviously we've we struggled with we've been together yeah por casi oh my god i'm fucking drunk siete años almost eight oh we've been together for a long time and i want to say we haven't had this problem i want to say for like five years now that's good because that's good. Cosas, obviamente, yeah. you know that like i really had to tell my boyfriend like hey like mira babe Tienes, tú quieres una, como dices tú, yo le decía, babe, tú quieres un futuro con tu mamá yeah. o conmigo. I'm like, no, it really does get to the point where you're like, okay, like, no quiero sentirme como que estoy compitiendo yes, con tu mamá. Because es tu mamá al fin yes. del día, you know? Yeah, I definitely feel that. Como les estábamos contando, amigas, you guys are the first gay couple on the show. Let me just say also, we're filming this two days before Valentine's. Ah. Yes. Yes. What are your guys' plans? ¿Qué son los planes para el día de San Valentín, amiga? Oh. Get a whole Hotel, not yeah. <laughs> we don't. I have my daughter, so yeah. that, we'll just all we'll celebrate just, it together. Do something cute together. Like yeah, a little yeah. family thing. Yeah. 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 So, yo quiero platicar un poquito más about your guys' coming out story. I know you came out at 16 y tú a los 19. ¿Cómo fue eso para ustedes? Um, ¿Cómo les dijeron a sus papás? Well, I was 19, but the first time my mom ever found out I was talking to a girl was when I was 12. <laughs> She know okay. I, was, I was on kick if y'all remember kick, kick yeah. yeah um i had an ipod and my sister at the time me and her were like hiding things so my mom was like what are you doing and i was like oh nothing and i was trying to delete like kick really really fast and i couldn't do it yeah, yeah. so she grabbed it and she saw the phone and then oh god i remember uh, she really like be low-key be my ass like she low-key did like she gave me an ass whooping because of that and my mom's hispanic she's old school yeah yeah so at that time she was not accepting it at all which i don't blame her i don't not to talk bad about my mom but yeah she did really give me a big ass beat that day and i had to move schools because that girl was in the same school yeah i did so i went to another school and then fast forward i had got into a relationship after i graduated high school and i moved out of my well i ran away to my ex-girlfriend's house and then okay. but at the time she was my friend i told my mom that so she's like why are you leaving what are you doing and i told her i was like well mom like i really like this girl and then at that time she was like if that's what makes you happy i accept it because she already knew like yeah, she's yeah. like i can't change who she is and it's been years yeah, yeah. since she I, first found out yes. yeah, yeah so she ne she didn't beat my ass the second time <laughs> <laughs> like the first one didn't change me so yeah i told her about it and then after that she was very accepting and it was it was a very toxic relationship. It was not good, but she accepted me for who I was. You yeah. know what I mean? ¿Y cómo fue contigo? Uh, well, I came out to my mom like verbally when I was, I guess, a soft. Mm, I I don't even remember honestly because we struggle. I struggled so much too coming out to her. I I hid it. I lied. And her main problem is, yeah, just tell me why are you lying to me? And I just lied all the time. Like if I had a girlfriend here, another girlfriend there. Ah, uh, such a. Ah. <laughs> no, I'm like, no. Relax, 
No, en high school, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, pero I would lie. It's, I guess to my senior year, I lied to her. And honestly, um, I college, that's when she accepted me. Not accepted me, but like that's when she was like, you know what? Like, you're right. There's nothing wrong about it. Because I have a basketball coach. Okay. And she has a wife. And my mom and her met because my mom didn't even want me to go to, to college. She's like, no, you're going to go to college here. Like, you're not going out of town. And I wanted to play basketball. So I was like, ma, like, I'm getting offers. Like, let me go play basketball somewhere else. She's like, no, like, you're staying. Like, I'm telling you, like, my mom and I were like this. But my coach was like, I'm going to talk to your mom. And you deserve to go somewhere and play good. Yeah. So she was like, I'm going to talk to your mom and tell her, like, you need to let her go. Like, you know, it's time. Like, Eileen has a talent. She needs to go. Yeah. So my coach ended up coming to my house. When I told you they talked nothing about college, all they did was like, I got on La Peda, and they <laughs> both were like literally like best friends. And to this day, like they are in the, like they're best friends now. Pero since my coach has a wife, my mom loves them. Like my mom had like, you know, gay best friends everywhere and anywhere. Like, like besties, they would go out, this and that. Pero as a mother, I, I understand, like, you know, it wasn't normal back then. I really do understand her perspective that, like, oh my God, like, you know, like, what is she gonna go through or what is she gonna deal with? I have like, and I'm her unica, you yeah. know, I do understand. So uh, it was hard. We had not, we didn't have a good relationship. She thought she lost me. Like, I remember, like, she would tell me, like, she would break down about it because, like, we were just not, like, friends anymore. Like, that yeah. was just my they mom. didn't see eye to eye. I would literally would lock myself in a room and Nico Mia, and she would, like, tell me, like, come eat. I'm like, no, I don't wanna go eat. Like, I can't. Like, I just don't want to. And that's, like, the only hard times that I had in my life coming out to her. So she ended up like telling me like you know Eileen like I love you f I love you for you I'm sorry for everything I've done or I've told you that you're an embarrassment or whatever just anything so I'm so sorry about that. Llegó a un punto a que te dijera eso. Yeah, I just yeah she did and it was more like her anger because I would lie. Yeah. She told me that she was like dude like it wasn't more like just be straight up and I was just so scared I was so scared and like I lied so much to her about it like so much I would hide everything so we didn't have a relationship at that time but oh yeah like I said she ended up accepting me but it's so crazy though with my dad he's the she's the first person I came out to with my dad yeah so I'm talking about a year ago I came out to my my dad knew obviously my mom like I said they had a yeah. good relationship so my mom would tell my dad and my dad wasn't accepting at the Pero time de que saliera de ti, no, lo sabía. no yeah, yeah. until like dude I was like when I met you I was 21 Yes. Yeah, I was 21, and you know, we would have uh, birthday parties, we would have like family dinners, and everybody tenía su pareja. I'm like, bro, que pedo? Like, you know, I deserve to have my partner here with me too, and like, it's not fair just who. Nobody would ask me about my love life, dude. Nobody. So I knew. Because they knew. I, they knew, I yeah. knew they knew that I was into girls, and I'm like, bro, the fact that nobody even wants to ask me is crazy, though. It was. But um, they knew until I told everybody, like, hey, this is Fabiana, like, this is my girlfriend, and I want her to be around the family because, you know, me, it's not even about you guys. I yeah. deserve to have my partner here with me and family gatherings and dinners, parties. And then it was so much harder to, to me to come out because I was like, and she has a daughter. So I was like, I'm so sorry that, like, I just felt like, I don't know, like, out of place, I guess, because yeah, I'm yeah. the only, I'm kind of the only one in the family that actually I'm like, this is my daughter, I mean, this is Fabi, and she has a daughter, and accept them, if not, I don't care, like, I'm choosing them, you know? Pero, uh, my dad, I, I, I was crying to him, I'm like, I'm so sorry, that it's so hard for me to say, hasta él también, he hugged me, he cried, he's like, although, you know, it's not what, you know, I, I thought I would have, like, she was like, I wanted you to have a husband, I wanted you to get married to a man to yeah. treat you right. He was like, I love you, I will never stop loving you, and he was like, and también con Melani, he was real accepting and everything, he was like, okay, and... Yeah, like, he never, like, did nothing wrong to me or nothing like that. So, like I said, with my mom, I guess it was senior year when I was, like, yeah, I, you know, I have a... I had a girlfriend at yeah. the time that I thought I took serious at the time. Ah, no, girl. so I swear I told my mom, like, look, this is it, you know? But then when my dad was with Fabi and... To me, this is it, y'all. I'm like, yeah, I have a daughter. Like, this is it, seriously. So, yeah. Es una plática que me da mucho interés because, obviamente, you know, me too, growing up gay, and I have a lot of gay friends. I think, um, you know... Um, I have very few like lesbian friends, right? Yeah. Like super, super few. Um, actually, I only have one. <laughs> Not few. I only I have, have one. one. <laughs> Literally. Ya con ustedes tres. <laughs> <laughs> but one thing I've always wondered, you know what I mean? Especially because growing up, I feel like women, it's, I feel like 
what you guys go through, you know, your gay journey is a little different than when a male goes through. I will mean, we always said that too. You know, oh, it's, it's 100% way different now in public. Because I feel like it's harder yeah. on men, even, no? even in general, like, I feel like, y lo digo, you know, con respeto, even like, I feel like for even men, a nosotros les dan asco. Yes. A ustedes, it can be a fetish. Yes. You know, no, I don't, I don't know. Yes. Like yes. Like, you know, did you, how was that for you guys? So obviously growing up, you know, liking women and being, because I, I do want to say you guys are pretty feminine. Uh, yeah. yeah. I yeah. do want to say <laughs> that. I have a different style. I'm not like girly. She's pero, just tomboyish. Pero tomboyish I mean, girly. I, like, I love to be a woman. Yeah, like, yeah, I love yeah. makeup, mi pelo, everything. Like, I get <laughs> little French too. <laughs> No, so yeah, <laughs> babe. No, but I am. I am not like. Ah, so, why is she laughing? Is that because she don't get stilettos? Por qué? Ah, that's why. Damn. Oh, sure. Ah, she's like, like, I don't get nails at all. Mm -hmm. It's like just a manicure. <laughs> Okay, no, but yeah, so uh, I do dress like my own style, but yeah. yo, I'm yo soy mujer, you yeah, know. Yeah, me, yeah. A mí me gusta ser mujer, so. But honestly. Not till we started going out, cause back then I didn't, I never saw like my little girlfriends or nothing. Yo estaba en casa, like I was yeah. not allowed to see until yeah, Fabi. It was more like, bro, we get, we're ourselves. It's my family, so a lot of men hit on me. A lot of men hit on her separately, and then they I, don't take it serious. I'm like, this is my girlfriend. They're like, like nah. nah. I'm like, dude. I'm like, why would I lie? <laughs> they're like, kiss. I'm like, why would I do that? <laughs> I'm like, why do we have to kiss to show you? It's all for the fucking fetish. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. But like, where's my shot? <laughs> a lot of men are cool though. They're like, oh, that's cool, and a lot of men are don't believe us but uh we get a lot of free shots that's the only good thing about us two girls oh, that we yeah. go out people find them, me attractive people find her attractive and like it's weird how like men hit on me a lot yeah. like on her or well, like girls hit on me too but not so much on her like i get both ah. and to me ah. she's like i have more game than her ah, that's what it was giving that's what it was giving literally no nah, hell no Fabi has more game she does when i get hit on men i don't know how to act i'm like she's all shy i'm like girl what are you doing no, like, like, don't ask for the no. shot yeah. Yeah. literally i'm like saca <laughs> No, but literally, but a lot of men do respect us, and a lot of men, they find us like a joke, but we're really blunt about everything. We're like, man, whatever, like, if they take a serious cool, we know what goes down, yeah. like, at the house, you know? <laughs> at the house, you're like in the bedroom. <laughs> Have you guys ever <laughs> encountered, like, a homophobic, you know, situation to where it's made you guys feel, like, uncomfortable or just in general, like, unsafe? Um, I wouldn't say unsafe or uncomfortable, but to the, f that one at the bar, the guy that was reading the Bible. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. We, we don't really, like, see a lot of homophobic people, like, saying shit to us. But there was this one time we were in Houston, and there's, like, these bars that you just walk it's past. like a street like, full of bars. And mm -hmm. there's always people preaching the Bible, which, do your thing. Yeah, we yeah. don't care what you do. But I just mean, I'm don't, a believer of God. I'm a Christian. Yeah, yeah, I am. Me so. too. But don't be a judgmental person. Because yes. then now you're just contradicting everything that yeah. you're saying. You're being hypocritical, you know what I mean? Because you're judging. And so, you're sinning for judging me, yes, you know what I'm exactly. saying? So, so me and her, I'm not a PDA person. I am I'm very neither. uncomfortable because okay, yeah, yeah. again I'm already gay and then I, I don't care what people say but also it just makes me because the looks and stuff like that I don't want to deal with that so I'm not a very PDA person but we were holding hands that day we were just I would, I'll hold hands here and there yeah. that's very rare you for me to do me, <laughs> I'm yeah, very yeah. rare so I just I was like you know let's go like <laughs> And then, like, he's preaching. We're ignoring him. And then he just starts talking about gay people. I was like, okay, but then cool. He was like, you two girls holding hands. Like, yeah, called us he out. called us out in a mic. And he had a big mic with a speaker. <gasps> he's like, come to the front. <laughs> come, come on, on the stage. stage. <laughs> but, and I don't get mad, dude. We like, didn't get mad. We just looked at each other, mouth open. And we're just like, are you, like, no, but, like, right one now? thing about me, I don't get mad about nothing. Like, there's times it takes me a lot to get mad, even if we're arguing. Like, sometimes I'm like, babe, yeah. Like, yeah, they hello, you know? Yeah, yeah. But I don't get mad. But since I'm a believer of God, too, it kind of hit me because I struggle with like not being a Christian and being gay you know I struggle with that a lot and there's times where I was like you know what I am who I am God knows me and I, I follow you not perfectly I'm sorry but you know I try my best to ask you for forgiveness for all of my sins I try to like come to you for help for when life is good I thank you everything but when he said that it hit a different nerve yeah, I sure. turned around I was like I was like did, he, did you hear that yeah, he, she started getting she's like you're sinning for judging I was like you're was literally like, oh sinning God. for judging and I don't call nobody out I don't yeah. even like argument like, I just go on with my day. No, she really does. I'm not me, on the other hand, I'd be ready. No, <laughs> literally. Pero it did bother me because I was like, dude, like, 
if you're gonna pr- like preach the word of God, like yeah. that, you're doing it kind of wrong, yeah. bro. Like I'm, I'm. There's nobody doing wrong to how they praise God to each their own. But if for you to call us out like that, I felt like that was really wrong of him to do. So that was like the only time, though. Yeah. That, I, besides that, I mean, thank God we really haven't caught anybody. Besides the Instagram before. comments. Oh, don't even get me started. <laughs> like, that I don't, don't even every yeah. day, all day. But every I feel like day. Instagram, it's like a little bit different than when you actually get them in person. Like, yes. Yes, yes. I've gotten. There's been times. One time at Walmart where like a homophobic was trying to beat up not just me, my boyfriend, but my friend Irma. Oh. And you know what's like one thing that not you Irma. Bro- <laughs> we were even just standing there. Like, it was like it was like well, those 24 hour Walmarts. Oh, okay, okay. okay. I, I had just gotten my first set of long nails. I had purple hair. Um, I remember I was walking through. You remember like I, I, they still do it actually at Walmart on the thin those bins with a bunch of movies. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, I was like literally like like looking through the movies. This was what like maybe like five years ago, Irma, fresh out of high school. Did you have long hair on? No, no, no. Oh, I had my, pur- this. I never purple. had long hair. This. Okay. Bi- I've had this same fucking hairstyle for ten years. <laughs> los pelitos. Uh, literally, I'm like, apenas no están, apenas tengo, pero así lo he tenido siempre, like a comb over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, but I had purple hair. I had mm. just like bleached my hair for the first time. You're feeling yourself. <laughs> feeling myself with long ass iridescent nails. They were literally. Era cuando estaba el trend de las iridescent sí. nails. And that one it was a white male um fucking faggot y yo rapidamente no escucharon Danny and Irma sí. they were walking in front of me because I was snapchatting so I was like nye, 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 nye. I heard that and I panicked a little bit yeah that's started scary. walking because yeah. I'm like oh my god like eran las una de la mañana oh, sí, yeah. fucking Walmart's empty outside it's dark so uno nunca sabe right so I started walking and me acuerdo it's been so long pero me acuerdo bien we were literally by the electronic shit y the guy with his girl la girl being embarrassed, pero siguiendo el cuento, sí. um, confronted us, started calling us all these names. Like, I'm talking about, like, the distance that you guys are to me right now. Like, st- and, and we're like, bro, like... No, we're just, you know, don't say nothing? We, no, I, my boyfriend was really scared. Me oh. and Irma were going at it with oh, him okay. vocally. Um, yeah, yeah, eso es lo que digo. También, cuando, since Irma was defending us, he was like, tú también, a ti te voy a agarrar, obviamente, en inglés. Like, I'll fuck you up too, bitch. Oh, damn. And what was so embarrassing was that his girl was right there. They're just letting him act like that. Yeah. Like to me, I'm she like, didn't say I, anything at all. She didn't say shit. Like, if I'm being hundred percent honest, that guy, it's sad, but se miraba la muchacha con miedo. Sí. You know what I mean? Oh, so okay, siento que okay, por yeah, eso yeah. no le dijo nada. Sí. And just off the bat, just from seeing him, how he's reacting to people he's never met, like, pobrecita, you know, no quiero decir, yeah. pero I feel like there was a reason why she didn't defend us because she looked embarrassed. She yeah. looked she probably scared of she him. She was scared of him, right? Y si me acuerdo que cuando nos fuimos de, de la tienda, yo tenía miedo. En ese momento yo bien con huevos y todo, but like, <laughs> I'm like, through the movie. Literally, no, no, no. When I was, because I was telling him shit. I was yeah, like, fuck oh. you, fuck you, let's go at it. I was fucking like 18 at the time. Yeah. Cuando salimos teníamos miedo porque eran como las una, dos de la mañana. Everything was dark. And we parked far. So we're like, fuck, what if he's Running? waiting for us? Yeah. Yeah. Salimos too. corriendo. Anyways, going back to, you know, one thing I do want to touch about that you said, religion. Yeah. You know, religion also, you know, being a part of the LGBT and not feeling always accepted. I grew up um, in Mexico. Mm-hmm. Um, nací en México. Y en ese entonces yo era, tenía como cinco, cuatro años. I was into church all the time. Con mi abuelita iba a rezar sí. el rosario. Salí en parades as Jesus Christ himself. I have pictures. If I find them, I'll put them here. Really? Like, I was all about oh God. God. I still have my childhood Bible. Todo, todo, yes, todo, yes. todo, right? And as I started getting older, especially wearing makeup and like just seeing how weird people look at you, like when you go to church or just, you know, yes. I've had instances también como lo que, los, lo que les pasó a ustedes me pasó a mí una vez con mi novio to where it almost made me like distant myself from church and religion. Did I that, get you, do you guys yeah. feel that way in any shape, form? Distancing myself from church I had nothing to do with me being gay, but mostly because of like what I went through mm-hmm. in my like with my dad and all, but like with uh being gay no i feel like god accepts me for who i am and i have a connection with him now i talk to him every day so i don't yeah. think no i've never been distant from church yo también le preguntaba a mi mamá because like i know in la biblia they said like if you love your same sex like you know entras the gates of heaven i like that kind of like played with my mind a yeah. lot and um i told my mom i was like ma like do you actually believe that i asked a lot of people that i'm like do you believe that like if they're christian whatever like, do y'all believe that they're like, I don't know, but they were like, you know, just God loves you for who you are. My mom me decía también, she was like, my mom says, I don't believe that. She's like, I don't believe that. She was like, you're who you are, and God doesn't believe in judgmental people. Yeah. God, like, even accepts, like, people killing, people this, yes. you know. She Everybody was like, sins every day. So, like, yeah. that's what I was trying to tell you, that, that incident you had. I'm like, it's crazy how he's judging you for, like, you know, being gay. Pero, like, 
who knows what he does behind doors yeah. to his wife or like you know she seems scared or even that the most homophobic people that are men are always oh, the ones yeah, that yeah, like no, it ex- yeah literally yeah. I'm like I swear to god when I'm they like, be acting like that I'm like alright why are you I'm like, like what like are me? you trying to tell me <laughs> yeah. I'm like go to the restroom or what? I'm like you can say it nicer what are you coding <laughs> no <laughs> don't scare me she's yeah. always told me that though yeah, always. it's, it's true. true it's my best friend mama. he's gay himself and he's told me a lot of stories stories about the fuck from high school and I'm just like ain't no way dude pero tiene los mensajes that's crazy but like i said the ones that act more straight i'm like you're right like it really is sad though because like like you said like we're just living our lives like yes, you're, we're like, normal you're people. loving who you want to yes. love i'm loving who i want to love and for some reason a la gente le cala and i'm know, just yeah. like wait they you, really like, exist this. Yeah, you know in like i don't I don't know if I like to like talk about the subject. No más que like there's parents and like all that are judgmental about us. But like, dude, un tío raped someone who's this or yeah. like a dad or a brother. Like, and y'all forgive them. And y'all yes, forgive. y'all forgive. Or se hacen de la vista gorda. Sí. Yeah. 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 Like, no, it never happened. I'm, I'm like, like, y'all accept it more than me. And I'm, I am who I am. Yeah. I have, I'm not changing my name. I'm not changing this. I'm like, I'm Eileen, dude. And just because I love a girl, you want to not accept me, which never happened. Everybody yeah, yeah. accepts me. I'm just saying like, for those that judge, I'm like, dude, like, it's such a sad world that there's a you lot of... You have darker secrets in your family yeah. and then you're worried about who I'm loving. Like, yes. It, it no, you said it perfect, way. babe. Like, literally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're like, yes. You're like, we got a little TikTok video there. Ah. I'm going to tweet that shit. And then it's like, that's a viral little video right there on TikTok. That's great. No, you say that, though, but it really is the reality. Yes, you know what I mean? Yeah. Quiero platicar un poquito. Ahorita, como pueden ver, las viramos all over TikTok, all over social media. Pero no siempre fue así. Yo quiero saber cómo empezó todo eso. How did you guys start content creating? Cuéntenos. Uh, it was me. She's always, uh, she's always at I it. Was the one. Yeah, um, before this, I did have a TikTok account that was like at 480,000 and it got banned. Oh shit, just yeah. cause? Yeah, just cause. I think it's because of what I, was, what I would wear to work. Uh, It'll be like, you heard of bomb shows? No, they don't have bomb shows here. Is it like a Hooters? Yeah, yes, oh, kind oh, of. Oh, okay, oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, so like yeah. Marisco places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so. I'm like, so there was a reason. <laughs> <laughs> She's not like, no, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> She's like, I don't know why they would do that. She's all clapping her ass. And I was like, oh, shit, clapping ass. I definitely was. So my ass was always out. So I understood. Like, people were always reporting it. Mm-hmm. Whatever. It was not as popping as it is now. So... I think back of December last year, uh, I had posted a video of Just us. Just little nada, though. Yeah, it was one. It was the uh, jumping card or something like that. Okay, huh? And it was like, I'm the mom. And then... Uh, I will come out with Melania. Yeah, and, be, and then the second part was like, don't ask for dad. She got two moms. Yeah. At that time, that's when my daughter's dad um, was not around. Okay. Yeah. Like, as, he wasn't around, right? No, no, yeah. Oh, oh, that was December. He that was. was December. But, but it was just for a TikTok. It like, was just for a TikTok. For fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I mean, it I'm like, <laughs> literally, like, blew up overnight. Like, Crazy. We yeah. literally had, like, maybe 500,000, like, uh, likes overnight. And I was <gasps> like, what the fuck? So at that point, I'm like, okay, people are liking to see this. So we started posting more videos together. We still didn't get our content. Because so, when people ask what content you make, I'm like, oh, I don't know. Like, don't and when know somebody that. asked that, that's when I was, I was like, oh, we actually need. We like, need to have a specific content. content that, what are we known for, whatever. But back then, then, like I just want to say I was never into this like mm-hmm. never like I supported Fabi and I know that's always been her dream of like you know just doing what she loves and I'm like baby you'd go for it like yeah. when she told me I was like oh good shit baby like that video was popping yeah. like I love it but it was hard for me to be in videos it was hard for me to go live like you like, thought it was like your one time appearance yes. yeah but or I'm like no. no babe they love both of us I I'm need like you no to be babe in this it. is our career now <laughs> I know, I know. I'm like we're moving to LA tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> no, but like I said, like it was literally like I would get excited, but I know she sees a bigger vision yeah, than yeah, it, yeah. what I saw. And like I support her. Oh, you're like, oh shit, this I've is my always, breakout yes, moment. Yeah. I've always wanted to be an influencer. Like being behind the camera is my thing. I freaking love it. Yeah. So I started posting more and more, and I'd be like, babe, wake up today, get ready. We're going out, we're doing a video. We'll always do it like every day until when was it that we were just like, I was like consistent. It was like in November. November. And okay. Then we're in February. I had 200,000 followers on TikTok mm. at the time in November. And we're talking about last year. No. Like 2023. No. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah November yeah. like three months ago. Yes. yes. Oh, shit. And okay. then on t- Instagram, I had 25K followers. Yes. And then I was like, you know what? Let's just like start doing something different. No, you know? pero I'm going to say because I lost my job. 
Oh, I yeah, was, she had gotten fired. I had, a, yeah. I, had a, I was working at a brunch place. I got fired. Over some reason, my manager, we were cool. Even afterwards, I apologize. I'm so sorry. You know, this happened. And he has my back with everything. Uh, we're cool still now. Pero... I lost my job. I was like, babe, like, what the hell? We have bills to pay. Like, I lost my job. And I I was bringing more of the money into the yeah. house, like, for the payments. Yeah, and stuff. social media wasn't paying me as much. Yeah. yeah like, uh, one video will go viral. I'll be like, oh, shit. Like, I made like, $500,000. Yeah, it's like, yeah. I'll make like $500,000 a month. At that time, yeah. it was like, I was like, oh, shit. Like, you know, again, I didn't come from money, so I thought that was a lot. So yeah. I wasn't working either at the time. Was I? I don't know. Oh, no, I got him fired. Oh, From Ojos, yeah. Okay, okay. So, um, that's fire. <laughs> 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 oh, like that. A ver si no TikTok la No más falta. No, no, but, um, <laughs> So I thought in a week that I was overthinking. She's the type to like always like, babe, don't worry about it. Like we're good. And yo, I trip out about like, bro, we have bills to pay. Like I would always like overthink about stuff. And she would always like bring me up and like we're good. Like money's always gonna come one way or the yeah. other. So she was like, how about we like fully like do social media? Like I said, I wasn't in it back then. Like she was like how I am now. And she was. So I was like, you know what? Like what do I have to lose? Let's yeah. do it. So we started doing more content. People started loving us more. Like, num- like numbers were popping and everything. Yes. So I was like, damn, babe. Like, this is crazy. So, and she got a manager in December. And he's been, like, real with us and everything. So after that, like like I said, like, in November. It blew That's up. when we, we started, like, uh, at least me and her, like, the money started coming in. Everything was coming in. So all these opportunities, like, we're here with you and everything. Nah, like I was, I would have never expected. Like, like, I was saying, like. In December, no, in November, I had 20,000 followers on Instagram. Instagram, huh? Yes. We're, we're in February, y'all. I have 203,000 followers that on Instagram. That is crazy, girl. Like, we blew up. I was just posting reels every day. I was, con- like, consistent with it every day on TikTok. I grew up over, like, 200,000 followers on TikTok. I was like, wait a minute. Like, this, people actually like us. Yeah. And like, if you think about it, 462,000 people that follow you. And it's that's a, a lot. shit ton of people. A like lot. I know it's not a lot, of, like people that have millions, but like, dude, like, yeah. like I think when you put the scale as in like, bitch, in a stadium, not even eighty thousand people fit, yeah, and you're exactly. telling me that more than eighty thousand people follow me, yes, yeah. so like, that's that it's like crazy. Yeah. So and then when we get recognized, we still don't even know how to act. Like we got recognized yesterday, and I'm like, bro, LA, we're in LA. Like, we went to Denver. We got recognized in, in Colorado. Denver. Yes, that's like, crazy. I like, like, can't believe it. Ah, you're like, I went to China. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy though. No, no. And I feel like it must feel amazing though, especially it like does. how like, quick it's coming. It's crazy because like I'm being real vulnerable like right now. Like I'm just as like I'm who you are. I'm a human. You're a human. Yeah, yeah, and like yeah. to you to support me and like love me. Like oh mm. my videos this and that. I'm just like that's crazy to me. Yeah. And I can't even believe it till this day. Like right now where like people want to take a. I was like you want to take a picture with me. Like I'm yes, just like, like, like little too. me. Yeah. Like, I lean, bro. Yeah, like there's yeah. nothing. Like, to me, there's nothing special about me, but, like, it's such a, like, surreal feeling that, like, you know, only God knows what's our plan, and, like, it's crazy that I just love the support that people actually love us for who we are, like, it's crazy, amazing. They love, they love, let's, let's, <laughs> let's rephrase that. They love Eileen, because the comments and her DMs, they, be attacking they hate me, like, Shut up. no, they do, we go live. No, you have your followers, I do. babe, yes. Like, Five percent, and Eileen's like ninety-five percent. Like, oh, I mean, no. just follow you to see her. No, like, I'm, really, I'm being that ass. Like when I just post me, sometimes the likes are not as much, and then when I post Eileen, it's like over a million likes, and I'm just like, uh-huh. okay, what am I? Eileen's like, just give me the account, <laughs> baby. Literally. So we were live today, and everybody was just like, if I say something, they're like, why are you so rude to Eileen? You're so rude. You're so mean. Like I can treat her better. I'm like, but well, dale. Uh, <laughs> no, nobody knows that, like. Yes, we're dating, but we treat each other like we're best friends. friends. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, what? like, we talk shit to each other. That's literally, our, our I'm like, well, that's like, why, like, you know, you did this today. Mm-hmm. Or I'm like, well, that's why your hair looks fucked up. Like, <laughs> yeah. Literally, but like, that's our relationship that yeah, nobody yeah. understands to this day. That people be like, oh, they're so rude to each other. They're this. I'm like. But that's how we've lasted because yes. we treat each other like best friends. And that friends. never gets boring, bro. Because like, <laughs> we, make, we make each other laugh. Bro, what did you tell me this to <laughs> I'm like, cuenta mia, cuenta. What did, what did she you? tell you? Oh, estábamos <laughs> mad about something. Oh my God, no, Eileen, no. No, no. Cuéntalo, cuéntalo, cuéntalo. Okay, well, we weren't really mad, but well, like... not like mad, but we're... Molestas. Like, molestas. No, we're getting shit on our nerves. Like, they're <laughs> like, we're and we pick on each other yes. when we're mad. So I was just like, yeah, you're hunchback-ass whale. Like, you're hunchback-ass <laughs> No, you're hunchback-ass hoe. Yeah. 
she did I was like, no we looked at each other busted out laughing like I looked at her and she looked at me she's like I couldn't even take myself serious like we busted out laughing like you're like I can't believe you said that <laughs> no, I'm gonna crack out like, she was like I can't believe this shit came out of my mouth I'm <laughs> no, like I, it, first of all I sounded so ghetto and I knew she was gonna laugh so I was like packing up to come to come here so I didn't even look at her and I knew she wanted to laugh and I wanted to laugh but so. there's times I'm like when are you gonna stop talking like literally yeah. when are you gonna stop talking why would just, you say that <laughs> we both that's my mom my mom she was like like yeah. I she was like, I see. Like, you're like, you're like, you're like this. So I'm like, yes, I need to like practice on that. But like, we literally like crack each other up like that. No, so it was really nobody funny. understands us. Y'all might think we're toxic, but that's just. But how that's we, really how we are. We get along that way. And like way. in her DMs, they're just like, you need to do better. Like, you need to leave her. Like, she loves her baby daddy. Like, she has yes. a whole family. I'm like, first of all, it was a one night stand. I do not know this man. Yeah. I promise y'all. Like. So, like, when they say that, I'm like, boys, if you want to come, come. Let's see if you, if you have better, if, I'm like, let's if you can do it better than me. Yeah. Let's see if you can handle her. No, 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 really, yes. Yes, like, literally. People think, like, Eileen's a very patient person, but I Eileen's a lot. Days. Eileen's I a lot. I have my like, days, bro. Like, I'm, nobody's perfect in relationships. But so. we understand each other. Yeah. Exactly. And I feel like that's all that matters. Mientras que ustedes entiendan. Es todo lo que importa. Especially with social media, I feel like when you put your relationship out there, it becomes uh, your guys' relationship and also their relationship. Yes. Yes. Anything yes. you do. Yes. 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 They can opinionate anything. You do anything. If I call her dumb on live or anything, they're like, oh, you're so toxic. I'm like, y'all, I'm just human. I'm pretty sure y'all call your, your boyfriend or girlfriend your the worst way. thing. Yeah. Your yeah, worst. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's not that serious, I promise you. So I, I laugh about it. People think when they're calling me toxic, saying that she needs deserves better, we laugh about it. Yeah. I'm like, babe, look at this DM on your Instagram uh, right now. She's like, I do. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I agree with that DM. I was like, I should leave you, right? Like, literally. No, we like, did. Like she'd be like, like, we the, made a video like no, that. We're acting to hate comments. And oh, we okay, did okay, do yeah, it. Yeah. She'd be like, the door's wide open. Babe. I always like, tell her. I tell people all the time. Eileen is always free to go whenever she feels like it. And I will never hold her back. And it's not me being like, oh, I, I, I know I can do better. It's yeah. not that. I just, I know my worth. She knows her worth. She knows me. She will always tell me, be like, if you want to leave, you can always leave. We will never hold each other. Like, yeah. Hostage. And I feel like that's, that's very important because I feel like with social media, especially with like, obviously you guys share so much, but it really is so little. You know yes, what I mean? Like, yes. I feel like if you post a two minute TikTok, girl, like there's 24 hours. Like, what no, did y'all do in the rest of the yeah, hours? Exactly. So obviously, te corren a ti. You start doing social media. That video blows up. And then what happens? After that video blew up, I some videos obviously didn't do good, but yeah. the more I posted with her and my daughter, it started going. But I don't show my daughter on yeah, social media don't. as much. Okay. I try to limit the way that I show my, my kids. People can be weird, you know, man. There's so stuff. many weird people. Like, yeah. I go on TikTok and there's like somebody posting their kid with like a bathing suit and there's like 2,000 saves. And I'm yeah. like, why do y'all have a baby? Like, you know? So I limit how I post her, but I started posting and I'm like, okay, babe, we need a specific like content that we can make you know we started making skits people started Breaking loving other, it like, like it was just like the thing that people enjoyed watching so i think until december when it started going like every video i'm talking about like every video started going viral we just started doing it like it was uh, likes after likes i started reaching out to agencies okay uh, i always got some that like will reach out to me but it was not something that called my name yeah. Yeah. they looked scammy yeah, or they like, weird. it was just yeah. weird yeah. trust somebody like though. the emails at, at gmail.com yes. oh, yes. yeah. no literally so i had gotten this manager one time but it was just deals like a hundred dollars yeah. 200 which i know was not the worth of the rate that i was doing for my videos so i reached out to the manager i have now and then Man, ever since, again, I've never seen money like that the way that I see money now. So shout out to Cash. Yeah. <laughs> and he's a new manager. He okay. just started. So I reached out to him and I told him and from there, everything has gone. Like literally where we're at now. Like, we literally. are here because like all of that from our followers, like if it's not for them, like some influencers are like that, like when they get money, it gets into yeah. their head and they're just like, well, I don't give a fuck what anybody says. I'm like, dude, you're literally here because of what people say. Exactly. You can't act like that. Like. You need to be nice to your followers. Yeah. You cannot I be mean. I feel like mean. people, when, when they see that money coming in, they forget who made them yes, that money. Yes, it literally yes. is like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah it literally yeah. is. So sometimes when I look at influencers, I'm like, that is so ugly. Like, you should be so grateful and blessed that these people look up to you. Yeah. Like, what's the point of being rude? Yeah. Like, it can go like this. I yeah. literally, many people will forget about you and that money's gone. The money's exactly. gone. I, I've been doing this shit for almost 10 years. I've seen people come and go. I've seen me almost go. Ah! <laughs> I swear to God, and I'm always, I literally filmed a video, like a TikTok getting ready because I was announcing a little news. Una noticia que les, les conté cuando llegaron about oh, the, sí, the sí, podcast. Sí. I was filming a video and I literally was like thinking that because the success of this podcast wouldn't be what it is if it wasn't 
for the followers, yeah. for the viewers. I don't give a fuck if I have Gloria Trevi or El Presidente yeah. aquí. People are not going to watch if they're not fans of whoever is yeah. here or they're not fans exactly. of me. So at the end of the day, it goes back to the followers, to the people that love us, to the people that love watching us. Because if no one cared about me, no one cared about y'all, this video would have no Never video. Happened. Views. 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 I'm like, two views, which are fucking mine and Irma. Three with Dallys, another two with y'all. <laughs> I swear to God, I feel like a la gente se lo olvida. A lo que yo tengo de conocimiento, se conocieron through TikTok. Yes. ¿Cómo pasó oh eso? Yo quiero saber cómo empezó esa historia de amor. Uh, like I said, I had a TikTok page that was like a 480,000 followers. At that time, my girl here was in a relationship. So <laughs> she was in a three-year relationship. At that time, I had just ended my relationship no Very, when I met you on TikTok you still had a girlfriend oh I, yeah but you never um, like texted me or anything yeah because I saw she had a girlfriend I was like <laughs> <laughs> oh wait my turn oh, <laughs> my turn yeah, so like, so where do I get in line <laughs> no I'm like I'm here <laughs> but she was in a relationship thinking that I'm like damn girl like why are you thinking that yeah, so yeah. at the same time we were both in a relationship I ended that relationship it was extremely abusive like one of the most abusive relationships I was like it was physical mentally it was emotionally draining something I had lost like 30 pounds in a month oh, because shit. it was so toxic so at that time um I would post here and there when I was working at the at the restaurant she had DM'd me because she makes merch. Like, well, she'll make was, her clothing line. It was line. 2020. You know, COVID was happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't working. Nobody was, you know. So I was like, man, I want, like, some money coming in some one way or another. And I love style. Like, I like fashion. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to just start my own little clothing thingy. Like, just my own stuff. I mean, Para donde llega. See, yeah, I was yeah, like, let's yeah. see who buys or whatever. So it went really well. And the thing is that I was like, you know, I need to start reaching out to people to promote my stuff. So that's how I DM'd her. I literally, I remember, all I said was, let me send you some merch. That's all I said. And she was like, I'm here for it. She never promoted my shit. She never promoted my stuff, like, ever. So I was like, whatever. Like, but yo sabía lo que estaba haciendo. Because yeah, yeah. I saw that her bio said, like, from Houston, Texas, and I found it her attractive. So I was like, one way or another, like, if I just get a DM back, I'm happy. Like, literally. Yeah, yeah. Pero, um, no, yeah, so at that time, um, when she DM'd me, I didn't promote it. I was always too busy at that time. So this was in January. And then you were also dealing with your toxic yes, relationship. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I went through a lot. I did. Yes. After that toxic relationship, I got a rebound. So okay. I'll tell, we'll talk about that later if we have time. The thing is, though, what's crazy is that she says she's been knowing me. I did. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. Okay. The world works in mysterious ways, yes. y'all. So I had a very close friend at the time in high school. Okay. Which is a family friend from her. Yes. And I remember they were talking to me about it because they wanted to put, <laughs> they wanted to hook up my ex with her at the time. Yeah. Yeah, so I already knew about her when I was 18. Oh, yeah. just, it's okay, fucking okay. crazy. So the high school she went to, I had uh, friends that went there, like I said, family. And friends. they're really close to her. And I would hang out with them, but I was like, I was like, babe, I never saw you around them like ever. Yeah. But I never noticed you. Yeah. <laughs> like, did you notice me though? <laughs> no, but I knew about her. Mm -hmm. So it was just crazy, like after 18, 19, 20, three years later we meet and then now look at us and we're yes. just like it's, it's just a world is like how do you say that like, is it soul ties que chiquito like, que chiquito es el mundo no that's a, that's a small world but it's like soul ties I guess or like soul ties oh, you know what yeah. I mean like oh, it just soulmates, soulmates or, yeah, or yeah, something yeah, like yeah, that like yeah, yeah. we were meant to cross paths how did you guys make it official like obviamente se conocen <laughs> um, um yeah so I was working at bombshells uh, I was kind of locating the manager <laughs> So I quit my job because you know it's not okay to date your manager, which he was just a rebound. It was like literally a month after I okay. went after that relationship. It's because you know he was treating me right, and it was something that I was like not used it's to. It's like this. what you think you want, yeah, you know? yeah. but it's not. This man had five baby mamas, and oh. yeah, yeah. Okay, let's say. <laughs> she was oh, like, not the six. Is <laughs> that like, your one night stand that you were talking no, about? No, no, no. Thank God. Thank, no, no, literally, thank yeah. God. Yeah. yeah. So I told her, I was like, hey, she was 20 at the time. Okay. So I was like, come to Bombshells. You won't get ID'd. I know the people. Like, just come over. So it was January 19th. I remember 2021. Yeah. We met for the first time. I have a video of us, like, taking a picture together. At the time, she was not with her girlfriend at that time. Yeah, because we were, like, on and off. We were yeah. long distance. Okay, she okay. was from San Antonio. I'm from here. Yes. But we are long distance. But it's like, you know, like, when I'm with Fabi right now, I find nobody, like, Attractive, attractive yeah, like yeah. no, nobody her. like, yeah. <laughs> no, like, like nobody. Exactly my mom <laughs> 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 
No, 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 I was so immature back then. Like I'm just saying, like now, like I am a attention. Like there's nobody where I'm like, girl, my my girl's better than you. Yeah. Like literally, that's how I think. But <laughs> whenever I was feel that way, I was like, you know what, Eileen? Like you're not like I, you're not in love with this girl. Like yeah, you think no. you are. So when I met her, like I wanted to hang out with her all the time. And like like I said, we we're long distance. She lived in Houston. To me, I was like, fuck it. Like if I drove two hours and a half for somebody, I'm gonna drive thirty minutes for somebody. You know? Yeah. So, so like, uh, oh sorry, were you not finish? No, I was just oh. saying, like, that's how you knew, like, you're not but, in love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so when we met, uh, I was kind of, like, low-key in a relationship. Not really. It was nothing serious. And you would flirt with me, too. I would. I was yeah. a hoe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we met, whatever. We were just friends. We'll flirt here and there, but nothing serious. Yeah. I think a couple months passed by and she ended up getting back with her girlfriend. Yeah. And but she was still flirting with me, but I didn't know she had a girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, until she I caught her one time. She was like, Oh yeah, my girlfriend. I was like, We have a girlfriend. She's like, ah. I was like, why didn't you tell me? So then she officially broke it off with her girlfriend what in June? June. Yeah, like that's when I was like, you know, I'm mentally checked I'm out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So me and her will hang out every day. At that time I had just turned twenty one. I was ready to go out. I was ready to party. Hey, that man, I was twenty one. I was like, shit, that I was like, let's go out like together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And at that time, um, for those who don't know, I had lost my dad. So at that time I was just drinking all the time. So I wanted to go out a lot. And I was always inviting her. So I was like, hey, come on, let's go, let's go, let's do this. She will come. She's not like that no more. She doesn't really like to go out no more. <laughs> so when we get drunk, you know, we'll kiss here and there, you know, have a good time. As friends, oh my yeah. As friends. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Not until I got pregnant. She was just like, yeah, I don't have a chance with her I anymore. I was like, oh, my chances are gone, you know? Like, But I didn't mind it. I was like, she's a cool friend. Like, we have our... our we have but you our... thought she was going to do her life with the person or, or what? Oh, uh, yes well, and no. I, I met him at the club that we were always going to. Yes. So yes. I knew of him. Like, even yeah. before me and Fabio were dating, like, I knew him because we hung out together before. Mm -hmm. But like I said, like, even though, like, I was 21, I've never imagined being a mom at 21. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? Even if she doesn't stay with the dad, like... That my chances are done. Like, she's pregnant. She has someone else, like, a baby to look out for now. <clears throat> like, ya se acabó el pedo aquí, you know? No, yeah. So, I ended up getting pregnant. I think around October. We were, like, four months. November. Pregnant. Yeah, we were, like, I was four months pregnant. Uh, we started deciding, well, let's be, ex like, not, like, together. Let's not talk to our exes. Because we were talking to our exes yeah. still. Oh, yeah. Just, like, you know, texting here and there. You know how it is when you have an ex, like, you still when keep you in contact. Up, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, Especially whatever. if you guys weren't serious. Yes. Yeah, 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 so, we're just, like, yeah. okay, we're serious now. Let's drop them. We ended up dropping them. Um, I got. I was supposed to give birth in March, but I gave birth in February. Okay. My daughter was born a month earlier. So after I gave birth, that's when she asked me out, and then it's, it's like. No, pero the whole time I'm telling them like details. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, that little like, thing. You know, the whole pregnancy, like we would like she would feel like, man, you're gonna leave me, dude. Like you're gonna leave me right after I gave birth. Oh yes. Like I she did. would be like, why are you doing this? You're hurting my feelings. I was like, no, but I, I'm really into you. Like at that time, we already loved each other. I had said I loved you and everything. I was like, I'm like. She understood me and I understood her, but I'm so sorry. Like, you know, just, just like, yeah. maybe it sounds shitty to say, but I'm, you know, you're 21 and you just you don't know. What, you didn't know if you were ready for yeah, that. Yes, so I was like, I was so honest with her. I was like, I'm sorry. Like, I'm a, like, she was like, well, just, let's just stop talking right here and there. I was like, no, like, I, what if I do want to do this? But it was shitty on my part because I'm like, dude, what if I'm not ready? What if I don't yeah. want to? I'm going to break her heart, you know? But like I said, the whole time she would feel that way and all this stuff. I was like, no, like, you know, in my mind, I was like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Whenever she gave birth, I asked her out a month after Milani was born. And, um, you know, the rest is history. Like, we're yeah, here. Yeah, and, and it was the first healthy relationship, like, the most healthy relationship I've ever been. So I don't know how to act. So at that point, I'm just like, bro, I just know if this girl leaves me. I'm going to be broken. Like, I'm not going to be in any other relationship. Yeah. I and was then like, you have a baby on the way. Yeah. Yes. So I was so into it because she was, she always treats me right. Eileen has a lot of patience for me. Like, a lot. And she knows I've gone through so much that she deals with, like, my anger issues, my alcohol abuse, like, everything. everything. That, everything. So I, when she was dealing with it, I was just like, nah, I know she's the one. So, yeah. Like, she like, wouldn't be dealing with all this no, shit if, if she, she didn't love serious. me. Yes. Yeah. 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 Like, for me to be dealing this with somebody and then also, like, accepting somebody else's daughter as mine, my own. Yes. I'm like, this is my forever like i don't care like i told us like i can see you at your words and i was as long as we both can communicate and talk about it like why can it can it not be fixed we're all broken we're all like broken our own like 
ways. So I was like, dude, like, me voy a dejar de ti, and I'm gonna go with somebody that cheats on me. Me voy a yeah. dejar de ella, somebody else is gonna have a drinking problem. I was like, bro, like, you, you know. You might as well just go with it with somebody person, you know you're gonna be with. You know, if yeah. it's worth it, it will. You know what I'm saying? You'll make it work out. Yeah. Ahorita quiero platicar un poquito de tu embarazo, you, you know, all that. Pero quiero platicar de algo que ustedes ahorita ya en casita a lo mejor se les va a caer la jaw. No Van a estar súper es. sorprendidos. Dos años después de que se conocen, se casan. Yeah. ¿Escucharon? Yeah. Están casadas. The secret is out. The secret, the secret is out. Realmente, ¿por qué tanto secreto? Yo quiero saber por qué. Oh, Why did you guys keep your marriage a secret? So it wasn't. Wait, I'm gonna just say. Well, say your problem. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I will say mine because. It's the reason why we got married, but also not the reason because we wanted to get married regardless. Like yeah. I said, we saw a future, you know? Yeah, but mind you, before this, me and Eileen skyrocketed our relationship. Like, we got together, we had a baby, we moved in together after nine months together, and then we got we married. married. We make a year in March, March 10th, y'all. My family is not from here. Okay. So we, my dad passed away, and he was like the case of like the whole thing. So after he passed away, there was not much of a case anymore. So my mom had to deal with it. We went to court. April. April. We went to court April. But before that, they had told us, like, we might get deported. It was, like, oh, it was yes. a high chance, yeah. It was a very high chance. So at that point, I'm like, fuck, babe. Like, what do I do? I was like, you don't have to marry me. I was like, I'll go find somebody. No, I was like, I promise you. Me. Like, I'll go to Colombia. No, no. no, I literally told her. I was like, I will go find somebody. I was like, I'll even ask my baby daddy, which I feel like he will because, you know, we have a baby together. So I was like, I promise you, I don't want you to feel like I'm trapping you. Yeah. I knew for you to do this so quickly. Like, we we haven't even made a year. And then we got married. I think it was January, February, in March, we had set up the date in the court. We didn't even have a wedding or anything. Like, we did, I did wear a white dress. It was not the best dress. Like, <laughs> if I show you a picture, you will literally laugh. Her sister said she looked like a pilgrim. It, it, was, was, a, it was like a pilgrim dress. No, yeah, we That's were in a rush that day. It was bad. Like, I had pearls on my hair, like, it was a quinceañera. It was. <laughs> So at that point, I was really scared. I told her, I was like, I'm nervous. Like, I don't know what but to do. Say, I didn't know what the hell I was doing, dude. Like, yeah. you know, like, I'm trying to help somebody out this way. But I was like, I do see a future with you. So I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Like, let's mm. get married, bro. Yeah. Like, let's do it. And you know what? Like, I saw my mom and dijo, like, she was like, one thing I did raise you is to help others. Yeah. And obviously, like, it was hard for them to accept it just because we skyrocketed. No, we started. It was quickly. Yes, After everything was happened. Like, one thing I did teach you was, like, if somebody needs you, Eileen, you're going to be there yeah. for them. Yeah. So, again, why? Why would I let her marry somebody else if I love you? Like, if mm -hmm. I, we love each like other. Like, she can marry me. Yeah. 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 And now, yeah, so that's why we got married. And, like, we kept it a secret a lot. One, because... Yeah, people were just like, when are you going to get married? I'm like, oh, soon. Like, now... We're already married. Yeah, yeah. now my no, TikToks the are... the thing is, look, yeah, we have no rings. No rings. Yeah, So, the thing no is rings. why... Is, is that the, how rushed it was? Yes. No, 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 yes, it was. Like, we didn't have time to... We, okay, well, yeah, because of money, too. I want to yeah. give her the ring she like wanted. The right, like, the right ring. So, that's the thing what I was going to say is that, like, my dream wedding was never to get married like this, you know? No, never. Mine either, mine either. So mine is like, I told her, I was like, babe, we're married and we take that shit serious, of course. I was like, but I still want to propose to you. I still want to have our dream wedding. I was like, like I literally, you deserve the proposal and I'm going to give it to you one day. But even though we're married, it's going to feel like we're getting remarried yeah. again in our way. You know, not rush. Not yeah. you feeling like you're getting deported. Not me feeling like, you know, I'm in there just to help you out. Like, no, like, we take it serious. But that's why we never... Uh, announced it because I wanted to give the announcement of like me proposing to yeah. her and you guys know we're married and I love that everything I'm just saying like I will propose to her well ni que se dé cuenta de ella, we will have our dream wedding one day. So yeah. Y va a pasar. Sí. Obviamente cuando se casan, even though it wasn't your dream wedding, ¿qué fueron los sentimientos? How did you guys feel? We, What was going through your guys' so mind, nervous, heart, body, dude. everything? We were so nervous. Let me we tell were you. Extremely nervous. Let me tell you the judge. Her name is Fabiana. And the judge was like, Eileen, will you take Fabiana? I was like, I She repeated that. She's like, yes, I take Fabiana. I'm, I'm like, like why would you call me like, that? Our family makes fun of me because they're like, Fabiana? I was so nervous. Like, I, it was very nervous. It was quiet. The judge is there. Like, our family knows. And obviously, like, if we get in, like, people uh, that, that recognize us or anybody, like, yeah, we're married. It's my wife. But yeah. well, have we announced it like that? No. But yeah. it was a scary feeling just because I was like, I hope I'm doing the right thing. Like, yeah. at the end of the day, yes, I accepted her daughter. Yes, like, I moved in with her. But nunca sabes, like, the shit goes by so fast. But I knew in my heart that 
no matter what we went through, no matter the problems or anything, I was like, I want them in my life forever. Yeah. So I knew in my heart, like people might judge me that they're going to be like, oh, if I used to like, lean for the papers. No. I she, use I lean for everything. For, uh, according to people, no, that's what I do. Yeah, but like, I, was like, I was Sorry, I was just about to say that. Like literally, uh, I had made a video of like, I lean pays for everything. And everybody was like, oh, you broke bitch. Like you don't want to pay for anything. How about you pay for something? And I'm like, bro, we're literally married. Like we have yeah. the same money. So that's why I laugh about it now. And now that I do videos, Mind now you, I, she makes more money than me now. Yeah. So it's like, so it's like technically, yeah, it's our money. So now that I make videos and say of saying girlfriend, now I'm able to be like, oh, like my get wife. my wife's reaction. On TikTok, we say girlfriend still on Instagram on my girlfriend. When you guys told me you're like, oh, we want to talk about this, I was like, oh wait, yo ni sabía. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yo también que igual que ustedes, yeah. amigas. I was like, oh shit, they're married. Yeah. At first, because I, I do remember when you sent me over everything, you're like my wife, and I was like, oh, they're being cute. Like, <laughs> no, everybody thinks that. Yeah. 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 They're like, are you really married? I'm like, no, yeah. Like, why would I, why yeah, would I lie yeah. about no, being married? Because we have no ring. But like I said, like, we don't, I want her to get her dream ring and everything. Tomorrow. No, uh, <laughs> we can go right now, babe. Yeah. Yeah. After, after, after this video. Like Pandora's like, down the street. <laughs> I want one of these things. She's like, babe. I At least a Pandora so everybody can, like, take it she's, for real. She's yeah, real. Yeah, yeah. I'm doing it. I don't care I'm what like, anybody babe, says. No, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, get it from Walmart. Get it from Pandora. James Avery. She's like, babe, like, I just want a little ring to signify, signify. Significa or signify that like, like yeah. our married. love, you know. I was like, you know what? It doesn't sound bad, but I was like, dude, I just want to propose to you. Yeah. That's like my dream, and like just giving you the ring you deserve, like whatever it is. So yeah, but that is why, like going back to our your second question or whatever, that our problem started once we got married because. You know, that's my wife. Milani is officially now my stepdaughter. And it was like me still choosing my mom. This is why our relationship was like yeah. like that. So, yeah. Do you guys feel like after getting married, especially because it was like, como dice usted, so quick, mm -hmm. did anything in your relationship change, whether it was like negative or positively? Like, cambiaron cosas? I think the most issue we had was financial issues. Mm -hmm. Because again, me and Eileen think so differently. It was just always a, it was always a problem with us. I don't know why for some reason like there was more bills coming in and yeah. I I wasn't really working at the time. I didn't have money coming in. So I think financially and then issues with her mom was like the main issue. Yes. I think better and like in a like the good part about the marriage is like I guess we just got closer. We got yes. more comfortable. Yeah. We're just like okay, we're in this for the long run. Like we're going to be here yes. no matter what. And like And obviously it doesn't work out like that. Like people get divorced yeah. easily, but like I told her like I feel like, dude, like, we're going to grow old together because we're married. And like, divorce is not an option. Yeah, yeah that's really yeah. what she says. Divorce is not an option. Yeah, like I said, like, even if you were my girlfriend, I would take this shit serious as a marriage. Like, literally, because, yo, como yo digo, man, I've been in little relationships in high school. We have problems and this and that. But, like, dude, like, you got to go through it with the good and the bad. It's not always going to be happy, dude. Like, never. So, whether you accept them for who they are, it's going to go good. Like, yeah. Hablamos un poquito, obviamente, de su vida como casadas. Is it casadas or casados? Because when I was doing the questions, I was like, casadas? Casados is like in general? What no, is the Casadas, real? maybe because we're girls? Casadas, casadas. Están casadas, están casadas. But, but you also say that for a boy and girl. Oh, you do? Casados. Están, oh, like, están casadas. I was, when I was writing down the questions, I was like, ¿Cómo se dice? Casados, casados. casados. Let no, us know I think it's below. I think it's están casadas. Let us know in the comments, amigas. We're drunk. No, <laughs> One thing I do want to know: Was your relationship always this healthy? Obviamente, de novios, or was there ever like a point where shit got toxic? Oh man, the, we started toxic in the very beginning, beginning of our relationship. Like, Especially, is, no, it got worse, y'all, when we moved in yeah. to the oh, apartment. Shit, yeah. I think people always talk about like, oh, this is a fairy tale. We move in, y'all. When you move in with your partner, I think that's when like everything starts because you start noticing who your partner really truly is yeah. like if they're dirty if they're clean if they wipe their ass right or if they don't like i'm literally like you know everything about them so at that time eileen was really noticing my drinking issue like i had a really like primero like all fun and games always go out this and that but once i started living with her yes. i was like whoa dude like it was really bad. I drink a lot. So there was times that I will completely black out and I would get very aggressive. Not towards her, but more of like, I'll start yelling. Yeah. I'll start like damaging shit in the house. Like yeah. I'm like, fuck this, fuck this house, fuck you, fuck this relationship. I don't want to be with you no more. And it was not something that it was going on for like every other week. This was like damn near every day at that point. Oh, like shit, it, it was, was getting that bad. No, yeah, it was getting yeah. that bad. Until there was this one time that I got really bad. At that time, me and Ellie were not on good terms. So, you know, she stayed home. I went out with my sister and my mom and a couple friends. We just went out. I got back home. Oh, no, my sister. It was just my friends, right? 
I think your sister was. Okay, I, I, I guess so. so. I think so. I went out and tequila and me don't really matter. Ma- nah, it's okay. Yeah, <laughs> it's all drinking. No, <laughs> like, tequila and me are best friends. Yeah. <laughs> no, but when I black out. So I was drinking shots. I was drinking vodka. I was drinking beer. I yeah. was drinking everything. And you know when you're mad with your partner at that point, te vale verga. You're just like drinking like, and shit. Yeah, literally. Yeah, like, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I'm drinking a lot. Um, I felt good. I was fine until I went out to go back home. Obviously, my friends took me because I was fucked up. I went back home. At that point, I walked in the house and I remembered. I was like, and I, my daughter wasn't there at the time. It was just me and her. So at that time, I'm like, I'm still mad at her. I was like, let's go start some hey, shit up. Hey, all Lorita, switch the switch. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was a switch. Like, I'm telling you, when I black out, it was a, an anger issue switch. She's laying down in bed. Le quito la, la, the, the cobija. I'm like, sass. I'm like, yeah. I was like, get the fuck up. I was like, since you want to be all big and bold, like, and you want to talk shit to me, like, get the fuck up. So I was uh, so ugly. Y'all. I'm sorry. It is, it is very ugly, but I'm being vulnerable about it because, you know, it does bring awareness and like, you're able to move past that like yeah. point in your relationship and, and it's I, your truth yeah, yeah. it is it, if you judge me it is what it is like i know i was able to fix that part of myself that i'm happy about because i don't drink like that anymore yeah, yeah. so i'm over here yelling at her i'm like shoving her i'm like well, i don't give a fuck like i'm so tired of this relationship so now she's done she just went back and lay down i go to the couch i'm like man fuck that i'm not done so i get back up and again i was like get the fuck up like i'm over this relationship again she goes lay down you trying to get a reaction yeah, yeah i was yeah, trying yeah, yeah. so i think because i wasn't getting a reaction i was getting even more angry yeah. so i go in the kitchen i start throwing cups plates glass everything shattered i don't give a fuck like my makeup all on the floor i was just over it. like i i don't know why and i think most of my anger comes from like losing my dad and all that yeah. everything that i went through when she's drunk when yeah. i'm drunk everything just comes back to mind so um i stripped down i started getting i got completely naked i did and i tried jumping out of the balcony yeah. <laughs> i did so at that point, Eileen literally had to like like smack it out of me. Like if she even told my mom, my mom was just like, "You gotta smack her. You have to smack her out of it because she's not here right now." Yeah. Like I don't know what to do. I called her mom. Like, yeah, it was and my scary mom. For yeah, you. yeah, and my mom yeah. even told her like, "You have to smack it out of her." Like, so when she when that happened, I kind of like snapped out. And I'm like, "Bro, what the fuck?" Like, so I don't remember any of that. I really I don't remember. Eileen told me, and I don't remember being that angry. I woke up the next morning kind of embarrassed though, low key. I was kind of depressed for a while. Yeah, after that. I, like, hid myself in the closet. Like, I didn't want to hear her. I she didn't, didn't want to see. She didn't want to come out the closet. I didn't want to look at her. I was just like, I do not want to see you. This is so embarrassing of me. I think, but Eileen was just like, you have an alcohol issue. Like, you need to fix it. She was like, you shouldn't be this mad when and you're angry. Drunk. Yeah. She like, you should be able to have a good time. You don't want, if you get drunk, like, have a good time. Do it when you're tipsy, but don't do it to a point that you want to black yeah. out. So I think after when that situation happened, after drinking for so long, since I was 21, this happened when I was 23. Yeah. So for two years, I was having an alcohol issue. No, literally. Like, for two yeah. years straight, I was drinking, drinking, drinking. It was just like every day. Yeah. So I think with Eileen, she was just talking to me and she was like, you need to quit. Like, but she thought to- I was judging her. And she was. Time. I thought she was, yes. She's like, oh, you just think I'm like freaking ugly. You think that I have problems. I was like, it's not. I was like, yes, we all have problems. I was like, babe, I was like, I'm not perfect myself. But are you I was raised with like knowing that there's triggers. Like yeah. obviously she knew that a lot of stuff triggered. I triggered yeah. her a lot. What I'm saying is that like childhood trauma comes a long way. And I was like, dude, like what happened or what is wrong with you that like you just want to drink, dude? Yeah. I was like, you drink so freaking much, cause like it's not even fun no more. Like we're, I'm not fun and like this relationship is like not even happy no more because you're freaking drinking a lot. And I was like, babe, I can enjoy some beers with you. I can go yeah. out, take a couple of shots, and like you know, best friends. But I was like, it's not even to that point no more where we're like, we're not even having fun. We're going home straight Like, home. you're scared as fuck. And she, she was. Gonna ask and she was. Yeah. She was yeah. I was like, yeah. we're just coming home to argue. I was like, it's not freaking fun. So that's when she were like, there was days, like I said, she was depressed. Like, she went kind of through it. And, um, I mean, I don't know what you want to say after that. No, I was saying we were just very unhappy. Unhappy. No. We were very unhappy for like two months. We did not, like, we were just there, very comfortable with each other. Like, we hardly ever talked. We were just on our phones the whole time. It was just like, the only time we were happy is when we had our daughter together. Yeah, literally. That was the only time. How was it for you, you know, obviously as her partner and seeing her go through that, seeing her do that to herself and eventually causing, not just to herself, but to your guys' relationship. And yeah. donde quedabas tú? Like, did you ever feel like, I'm done? Like, I'm out? Like, what it's, was what was going through your mind when all that was going on? I mean, it's crazy because, yeah, I would tell her I'm done. But, like, in my heart knew I didn't want to be done. Yeah. Like, I did it. And I just, like, I knew she can be changed. I knew she can be healed. And, like, I know, like, a lot of people that get healed from so many things that I told her, I was like, babe, like, 
you gotta want to you want you gotta want the help you gotta want the change yeah. so i tried it my best i was like i don't care like i'm not giving up like i'm not like there's like i say you can go to any other relationship and go through the same shit y pa que break up y con otro break up so i told her i was like babe let's go to therapy and she was like no just so they can judge me too and this and that was i do like even if you don't go through it therapy is yeah. good letting she's kind of hard like she is not the one to um to express her feelings yeah. at all so she was like babe like she's like, i don't even express my feelings to you what is gonna random person help me out i was like bro you just it goes a long way so we went to therapy that ended up helping i was like let's go to church she's like no you go to church by yourself i'm just like dude like I but there was a reason why i didn't want to go to church yeah yeah, but, yeah. yeah but i would pray to god all the time like please help me god like is this for me or is it not i was yeah. like show me signs like i was like you're showing me signs that it's not for me <laughs> I was like, why? Show me one sign. That that is. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, and there was hella signs. Huh? But I was like, why is it that I just want to be with her so much? And she told me it's because of our daughter. I was like, no, it's not even because of that. Like, yes, I love Milani. At the end of the day, I've seen it happen where people divorce, and it's like. I love Milani so much that it would hurt me. Like, I would feel like a piece of me is yeah. missing. But I was like, babe, at the end of the day, if we don't leave, we don't Like, you know, not to see. Like, that's your blood, not my blood. So yeah. I don't got to be with you because of her. You know what I'm saying? But I wanted to be with Fabi because I genuinely, like, love her. Like, even though I've seen her through her words, I've seen her through everything. And I would have talks with her, like, babe, like, let's step up. Like, let's do it. Like, even though, like... I was like, it's been one year. I was like, but it's been one year. But I was like, how badass, me, how badass. <laughs> no, how badass is it that we're going through everything in this one year? That fuck it, like we're not six yeah. six years in, and the seventh year we're we're breaking up for yeah. good. I was like, babe, like we're so fresh, you know, like I said, baby, and moving in, getting getting married. I was like, one year in, and we know todas las malas, todas las buenas, y nos queremos like, at the at the end of the day. So to me, I felt like that motivated me a lot. Where I was like, bro, she's gonna change, and she's gonna change. I was like, I know she's not gonna last like this forever, cause it's been a while. Yeah. And I believe in change. I do. And I believe in people like needing help. I motivated her to get help, reach out to therapy. We went to couples therapy and like individually yeah. she was like, oh, I want to go individually with you guys. So I was like, okay. But I found this so normal. Like yeah. to me, like a therapist is normal even if you're not going through it, finding God, going to church. Like we started going to church. It felt like she was like, it's weird because I'm so happy when I'm at church. And yeah. I was like, exactly, babe. Like you're just missing a part that you don't know what you, like yeah. you don't know what you're missing. Exactly. Like, like that. And so, it really is very much like I'm veces no queremos hacer cosas que no sabemos but like doing them you don't know what great can come out of it you know yes. what I mean? like for example for you guys it saved your guys' relationship guess a piece of advice que ustedes les pueden dar a una couple that might be going through this or has gone through this que sienten como que there's no you know rainbow at the end of the tunnel i mean honestly um when you know you know obviously there's times where like you know there's a line drawn like literally when you're mentally checked out i've been there before you just checked out but i was never checked out like with fabi like with my love to her it was more of the problems i was yeah. fed up with them i didn't want to see her i don't want to talk to her but there was never a time where like i don't see you in my future no more even though i would tell her here and there obviously but it was more like nah we're gonna get through it because when i met her she was pregnant and she was sober and it was the happiest she's ever been. So I was like, literally, I was like, I know she can be changed. So if anybody is literally going through a problem with anything, like if you go out and reach help, just speak, bro. Like people just want to hear you. And you just and be you, patient with somebody going through it as yeah, well. Yeah, you might think nobody wants to hear you or be heard. But that somebody else might be going through the same thing exactly. you're going through. And just be patient, communicate with people. Just your words matter, you matter. So honestly, like... When you know, you know, when you love somebody that's worth enough for you to be like, oh, I'm going to be with you through the end. Just try to find ways to help them out because even if y'all don't last, you want to see others happy. Yeah. That's what I said. I was like, babe, even if you're with me or not, I want to see you happy. So like I said, if you have that heart to help somebody out, you know, just do it. And it doesn't hurt nobody. It doesn't hurt yourself. It doesn't hurt them. It's just helping yourself out and helping somebody else out. So, yeah. yeah. Yo quiero platicar de algo que nos acabas de comentar. No sé si era chiste o no, pero nos cuentas que obviamente te embarazaste, tuviste tu hija through a one night stand. Yeah. ¿Es cierto o no? Yes. I want to say one night stand. I knew this guy for maybe like a week. Okay. I considered it a one night stand because I was drunk all the time. Yeah. Oh, it was okay, a, okay. But I got really drunk that night. I had, it's funny because I had just gotten in a fight um, with a, a girl before, like a physical fight. I fist oh, fought shit. this girl okay. in the middle of the street, drunk. And I had nails on and I remember I was just talking. It was just me and my, my best friend at the time. And this girl was like, how about you just shut the fuck up? And 
first of all, I'm drunk. So at that point, like my anger issues, I was just like, well, how, how about you just make me shut up? <laughs> this girl punches me in the face, like punches me. I was like, oh, hell no. She was like, she was a pretty big girl. <laughs> so I had this bitch like running back and forth in the street. Like she couldn't chase <laughs> well, me. But I, yeah. yeah, like I was like going at it with her. I was like, bro, what are you doing? Like, I don't even know you. So I had nails on and then like two of my nails kind of broke. So that was bleeding. Like full nails yeah, came yeah. off. So I was going at it with her, and then uh, my my baby daddy now picked me up, and you know we went home. You know <laughs> what we had to do. Yeah, yeah, what you got to do? We had to leave. That's the <laughs> Hey, but you were in the bed. You probably didn't feel it until the next morning. No, I didn't yeah. feel it. I did not feel it. I didn't feel anything. She's Things like, happened. Literally anything. <laughs> ah, and you know, I was gonna say that I was like, you know, nothing. Okay, <laughs> like you sure? And um, you know what's so funny that nobody knows? I knew I was ovulating that day. Okay. And she knew what she was doing, bro. <laughs> then he watches us. He's like, what do you mean you knew no <laughs> i didn't know me. <laughs> i didn't know i was ovulating i've always wanted to be a young mom but i didn't want it to happen like that so i knew it was possible obviously protection wasn't happening i wasn't taking birth control i wasn't taking anything and we obviously didn't use protection so at that time i knew i was that was happening so it happened and i got pregnant he obviously didn't want the baby which is understandable because i didn't even know the man yeah and mm-hmm. i met him at the club so obviously him saying like oh i want an abortion and i told him i was like you know what if you don't want to be a part of her life don't be i'm not getting an abortion whether you like it or not it's just not happening yeah, and at yeah. that time houston like texas had the law like the abortion law after, yeah, 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 I, no, yeah. after six weeks oh okay, and okay. i was already like three four weeks already so i was like well i mean i'm not gonna like you're not i'm not making an abortion that's yeah, it's yeah. final he was okay with it me and him i guess we didn't try working it out to be honest yeah, kind of did we tried for like maybe like two days two three days nambre nah, used to be at his house all the time <laughs> <laughs> like two months <laughs> No, mom is. It was like maybe like I guess a month. Yeah, yeah we yeah. tried it for like a month. I met his parents. Obviously, his parents. Were I used not to drop her off. Yes, she used to. She actually to him. Yes, yes. she did. She did. Yeah. Okay, you really were waiting your turn patiently. <laughs> no, yeah, because at the time when she was pregnant, I was like, my chances are over. But yeah, I was yeah. like, I'm gonna be. I'll help her out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Like, yeah. you're still looking out for her. Like, yeah, you're like exactly. just because I don't see a future or maybe not a future, like, that doesn't mean I don't want to... I'm not going to cut you off as a friend, yes. you know? So, yeah. yeah. So, I met his parents. Obviously, his parents were not happy because I was, like, kind of one night thing. So, after that, I think we had booked a trip to Miami before I got pregnant. Okay. Yes. And then I got pregnant. We still went to Miami and everything. I announced my pregnancy in Miami when I was, like, 12 weeks pregnant. And uh, so I got to, yeah, I, no, that's the time after the first trimester, you're supposed to announce oh, it, you yeah, know, because okay, okay. miscarriages happen before the first trimester. So I announced it and everything. I got likes and I, uh, social media was not my thing. Everybody yeah. was like, congratulations. Everybody was shook. They're like, the whole got pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, I wonder about who. Wow. Yeah, no, really. No one knew. <laughs> hot girl down. Literally. <laughs> that's how what she said. She's like, damn, hot girl down, which that was my hot girl summer. Like, that's the oh, thing. Like, shit. I was girl, literally. You took that too serious. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I did. I you was doing. Mission. And it was so funny because no. Nobody knows this, but I didn't know. Who, I did, but I didn't know who the baby, baby daddy, daddy was, was because before him, I was kind of messing around with two of his homeboys. Oh shit! <laughs> so you're like, I can't. The team Marine, the Rosie, where? Yeah, I don't literally. You're like, no, but in one mind though, you were like, no, it's him. Yes, it's him. but also there was also a part of me that like, damn, whose could it be? Was the overthinking yeah. and stuff. It was like one week, then the next week, and then him. So yeah, uh, me and him, I did my gender reveal and everything. He was in the gender reveal. It was cool. I was the gender keeper. She was the gender keeper. Friend, yeah. Oh my Keep god, on. you're the gender keeper. Story. Yeah. 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 So you know what's the worst thing? I love um, it. Uh-huh. The day before the gender reveal, she accidentally split out, like slipped out what I was oh having. God. Yeah, right the day before. If like, y'all know me, I am literally like the worst person to keep a secret. Okay. Not even a secret. I mean, like sometimes Se I, le pasa, I, like, I'm so slow. Like <laughs> I hate to call myself that, but it's the Same. truth. Yeah. I'm slow. Okay, she's like, hey, you make sure you're about the right, right. I was one. like, make sure you. Uh, you're take like, yeah, out. I brought pink. No, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I was like, I, yeah, was I got like, the pink. I was like, no, the blue. And she was like, I was like. No, oh, I was, yeah, I told yeah, them, yeah, like, yeah. make sure you take the sticker so it doesn't show the color. She's like, no, I ordered pink. I was like, literally, it's como si nada. I'm just like, let me just pretend I didn't hear her. Like, maybe I, was I like, didn't. She heard. I was like, like I get, like, I get, bro. But I went to sleep. I was like, nah, she's just messing with me. I was like, I'm gonna have a boy. But I already knew I was having a girl. But anyway, so my baby daddy was there. We had the gender reveal. It was all cool. At that time, I couldn't stand my baby daddy. When I got pregnant, <gasps> Look, no lo podía mirar. I was like disgusted by him. I was like literally like literally shut the fuck up. Every time he talked, I was like shut the fuck up. And he was like, why do you treat me like this? I'm like, I'm just so over you. And then at that time, I had a horrible pregnancy. 
from like I literally was diagnosed with I don't know how to say it, it was like hypermissis hyper gravidarum okay, okay. Yeah, like I the, recently had Alondra I think Alondra yes, had, yes, oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I couldn't drink water I couldn't eat anything I was throwing up I had lost like 14 pounds in the first trimester I think it was maybe until like I was like 15 weeks or so I was able to eat but I would still throw up here and there it was bad like even water couldn't help and I went to the ER because I told my mom I remember I was eating hot Cheetos I threw it up like seconds after and I told my mom I was laying in the bathtub sick nauseous like m- mascara running I was like ma weak I felt like I was so skinny and like um, delicada like I couldn't yeah, yeah. do anything and I just remember my mom coming in and like she opened the shower curtain she's like what's wrong and I was like ma like I don't think something's right like I, I don't think this is normal I need to go to the ER she's like let's go because I, I couldn't even drink water like water was not my like my friend and you're supposed to drink yeah, water yeah. yeah I also wasn't taking my prenatals because they made me nauseous I wasn't taking anything I was not taking care of myself so I went to the ER they gave me fluids they told me you have this so they gave me pills which I low-key kind of regret taking pills because I feel like that's the reason why my daughter came out the way she did. I was literally sick the whole time until I think mid, I was 20 weeks. After 20 weeks, I was good. I was feeling myself. I still didn't like knowing I was pregnant, so I wore big clothes because I felt really fat. I felt big. Milani was due March 26th. I remember going to the doctors February 10th, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was February 10th. And I remember them telling me, oh, your daughter's not growing as much, like, you know, yeah. she's a little behind. I was like, okay. So I was already panicking. I started crying. I called my mom. So I went to a specialist, I think the 12, the, yeah, the 13, no. It was Valentine's Day. On Valentine's Day, we had, she took me out and all of them 15 that went to the yes, ER. Yes. No, to like the hospital, whatever. Because on Valentine's Day, when she was pregnant, we had, like, she had the worst day ever. Like, Back she pain, was my, she, no, she, my, I took her to like the barbecue, Korean, the Korean barbecue. barbecue, all that, she no podía comer, like nothing. No, like yeah. my back wasn't like on a thousand. It was really bad. I was like, oh, I'm uncomfortable. Shit. So I remember the 15th, I went to the specialist. It was the 15th. Yeah. And I told him, I was like, hey, TMI. But it, I was like, I think like I'm like leaking or something. He was like, if you're leaking, you need to go to the hospital right now. So I'm like, and mind you, my dad passed away the 15th. So I'm going to the hospital the 15th. I'm already thinking the worst. I was like, this is another death that's going to happen. Like, I'm thinking the worst. So I go, um, and they're like, yeah, like your daughter's not growing. There's not enough amniotic fluid in your, in like your body, like in your baby, like the sac. And they said that your water's been breaking for like the f- past couple of days. So my water was breaking. I didn't even know, which was, it's really bad because I can get an infection yeah, yeah, yeah. and she can like, you know, pass away. So I was like, damn, like I knew something was wrong. I felt it in my gut. I was like, this doesn't feel like a right, like normal pregnancy. Yeah. So I went to the ER and they induced me on the 18th, around the middle of like midday of 18th. And uh, I gave birth the 19th. Um, of February. Of February 19th. A whole month before. A whole month. Oh, a whole shit. year. After, yeah, four days after my dad passed away yes. a year. So I lost the, like you went because you were trying to see what the hell was wrong and, and then they, you gave birth. Yes. Four days later. Yes. That's crazy. They had induced me and then I give birth. I'm panicking. I get the jitters, you know, all that. I, I pushed for like maybe, I pushed three times and she came out. After she came out, um, I look at her, but I'm just looking at her and I'm just like, wait, did I see what I just seen? I saw like a black shadow on her face. I thought it was just probably the shadow or something. And I noticed that she was born with a cleft lip. Oh my God. Well, I remember looking at her and I'm just like, fuck. I was like, literally what else can like yeah. be happening in my life right now? Like I, and you know, it is a huge, huge blessing that people don't really realize that it is a, a blessing to have a very healthy baby yeah people struggle with like stillbirth like stillborn and stuff like that like you know they don't have their babies all that like it is a blessing having a very healthy baby so, sorry if i sound uneducated but eso no era like it wasn't imp- no le impedia to live a normal life no no okay, no, no, so no. It was it's, just it's, like just, it's, a co- it's a cosmetic thing yeah okay, that's what the okay, doctors okay, say okay. it's a cosmetic thing okay. if she had the cleft palate which is a hole in your throat it does struggle a little bit with like she could have been deaf or she could have been speech, speech therapy, therapy all that. and stuff like that but no Thank, thank the Lord that God that she was just born with a cleft lip and it was something incomplete that didn't even touch her nose. Okay, okay. So it was a very surgical procedure. But again, again at that time, um, I wasn't with my baby daddy. So obviously I was also very sad the fact that I don't feel like my daughter would have known who her dad was. So I gave birth and after I gave birth and I noticed like she had a cleft lip and everything, I was very, very, very sad. I automatically got like was depressed so I look at my sister because my sister was the one in the room with me and she was taking pictures and videos and I look at her and I'm like this and I saw her face I saw my sister's face she was like I was like fuck well yeah so I'm asking her I was like is it okay is it okay 
they're like it was just something really small so i seen her they gave me my baby and i looked at her like i was it's so bad to say but i was very disassociated from her that i didn't even realize that was my daughter like yeah, i yeah. ni la quería but i didn't even want to carry her i was just like okay like the nurses kind of forced you in there right? yeah they forced me to carry her so i'm just looking at her and it, it's it's so sad to say because like literally my daughter is literally my world like yeah. i <sighs> <laughs> no, you're good, you're no good. I would I would literally do anything for my kid and like looking like looking back now it's so sad to f- like to think that I felt that way yeah. for her yeah. you know what I mean so I'm looking at her whatever they take her to the NICU because you know she was premature she was a whole month premature and they're like do you want to go see her I was like no I, I, I don't want to like I don't even want to look at her so I call my mom I start crying and I'm like ma like she was like no she's beautiful like I was like ma like I I don't you even failed, know. You said. Yeah, I was like, oh, I guess. Yeah. I was like, my body failed. Like, I couldn't even do that. I couldn't even, like, you know, create a human. Like, I already had these alcohol issues. Like, I lost my dad. Like, what else? You know what I mean? So my sister goes, the nurse comes in. I start bawling and I'm, like, talking to the nurse. And then she's like, no, she's beautiful. So I'm like, okay, whatever. Like, just at this point, I'm just like, everybody keeps asking me. I was like, just take me. So I go. I'm just, like, looking at her. She's very tiny. She was, like, the size of my forearm, y'all. Like, it was, she was like, like, just, like, pounds. she was four pounds, 13 ounces. Yeah, she was very yeah. tiny. And poor baby. She was, like, all in this machine. Um, she was only in the NICU for, like, an hour. So, uh, I'm just looking at her still, nothing. I'm just, like, okay, I gave birth. Is this what people feel? Like, is this what everybody says is, like, the true love? Like, you know what I mean? So, they're, like, you're gonna have, you're gonna have to breastfeed. The thing about nurses, they force you to breastfeed. Yeah. Like, they hate you even talking about a bottle. Like, they want you to breastfeed. Yeah. 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 Like, saca la no, yeah. Yeah. literally. Like, I was, like, damn. Like, but after I gave birth, my, my, my tits, my boobs started leaking already. Yeah. It automatically came. So, I'm feeding her. I'm just, like, okay, no connection. I'm still looking at her. And think, I think it was after they took me to the room and she came with me that, like, I'm checking on her 24-7. That I'm, like, okay. If I care about her that much that I'm checking on her, then I, there's some kind of connection. Yeah. You know what I'm going? You know what I mean? So, okay, cool. I'm looking at her. Now I start feeling kind of a connection with her. I'm just like, oh my God, like I really gave birth to this baby. I also didn't want to post her on social media, which is very shitty of me to say it, but I was very ashamed. Yeah. Because all my friends had already given birth. Their babies were perfectly healthy. Like, you know, they didn't have anything. So me, I, I was ashamed. I didn't want to show anybody. So after we were in the hospital, I was in the hospital for like a week and a half. Oh, such a long time and then I went home and I think that's when my postpartum depression started and I didn't think it was true I didn't think that was real so I'm taking care of her I didn't know what to do this is a small baby like I'm thinking she's gonna either die in her sleep I'm gonna like the thoughts of like postpartum depression like you start thinking yeah. things you know what I mean like I'm just like she starts crying I, I just want to shake her like I want to throw her off the bed like I know it's it's very it's sick to say y'all and I know people might judge me, but if you haven't had a baby or been through postpartum depression, you re- really cannot comment. But, but I saw you hear like stories about mothers like, yeah. oh, throw their babies in the trash can. And like, I don't know how that feels. It's crazy. Yeah. 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 No, I've heard it too all the time. It's algo super normal that a lot of women go through right after giving yes. birth. And obviamente tú, like, te pasa eso a los días de la muerte de tu papá, al año y al a año. los días, pero around the same fechas. Yes. And then sale con el birth defect, obviamente, like, your mind's everywhere. No, yeah. And so, I said so, I was like, like, because obviously they have surgery. I was like, babe, you're going to miss it one day. Like, yeah. her little lip. Like, it's, I do, I do miss yeah, it. I was I like, do. she's normal. Like, nothing. I was like, oh, wait, she got surgery for it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, like, five months later. But yeah, I went home and I had, like, this postpartum depression. Like, again, if you have never had a kid, you don't know what it's like to have these thoughts. Like, you don't want to think this way who wants to think about that that about their kid you yeah. know what i mean so yeah me i was just like oh my god like i need her to stop crying do i just like push her off the bed do i just shake her make her stop crying it's these thoughts that you have to be mentally strong to fight yeah. Yeah. because there's some people that are not mentally strong to fight it so at that time i'm just like okay let me call my mom and i'm calling my mom i'm talking to her i'm like ma like is it normal that i don't feel like this is my daughter and my mom obviously starts crying she's like no like you need to love her, this and that. And I think after like maybe a month, I was in postpartum depression for like maybe a month. And that's when I started taking care of her. That's when my mom, my mom instincts started coming in. That's when I would wake up in the middle of the night. If she made any sudden movements, like I would like take care of her and all that. Cause my mom did take care of her for a couple of weeks. Like, yeah. She would sleep with my mom. Not even me. Yeah, like, your mom did a lot. Yeah, yeah she did. So like at that you. time, like you got to think about it, y'all. Like postpartum depression, your boobs are leaking. They're huge. They're hurting. You're leaking like blood. Your your, your body is like yes. Yeah, your body's everything. completely changed. One body is crazy. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah. swollen. My feet hurt. My back hurt. Everything. Like I'm in pain. So when you're in pain, obviously you're not taking care of yourself. But then you have a crying baby. The yeah. frustration is just it's ridiculous. So yeah. it it was pretty hard for me. But after that, like 
It that girl is, yes, that girl is my world. I would do anything for her. After finding out about her birth defect, did it kind of change the way you mothered? Or do you feel like it was normal? Uh, like, yes and no, because I do think about the future, about, you know, kids are mean. Yeah. So I did think like, oh crap, like I'm going to have to probably take care of her way more than I would have to take to a baby that didn't have it because like... Yeah, yeah. Kids will say things, and I just. It, but when you look at my daughter, it looks like she really just busted her lip. To yeah, be honest, it looks yeah, like yeah. just a scar. The surgery was really good. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I do think about it. Like maybe in the future, when she's like in elementary school, I probably do have to warn her. Like, yeah, baby, you didn't come out like the way other kids came out. Huh? That's so sad. Like, like thinking about the. But that, wait, she did. She's no, normal. I know, it's but just like a little lavito, you know. But I, mean, I know what you mean. It's no, very I get much you like, too. But you know, Melani is so smart. Yeah. Like she she's, is. Uh, like, but it's just the fact that thinking. Like you have to tell your kid, like that because people don't, yes, yeah, people don't raise yeah, their kids to be nice. So it's like I have to tell her, like, okay, baby, like I know sometimes you're gonna ask, like, why did I come out like this? You know what I mean? But I'm a teacher to be like, be nice, whether or not people are being mean to you. Yeah. Like yeah. as long as you have a huge heart, you're gonna come a long, yeah. long way in yeah. life. So yeah. Hablamos un poquito de pues también tu relación con tu baby daddy. How was co-parenting? You know, during that time, was he in your daughter's life in the beginning or cómo era eso? No, you're gonna die. About so I feel like that also <laughs> maybe probably made it harder. Yes. Yeah. Um. So as soon as I gave birth and he asked for a picture, he completely ghosted us for eight months. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <sighs> So he had completely ghosted us for eight months. And after he was in the gender review, after he was in everything. Like yes, th that's the crazy part. He had asked for a paternity test again, which is understandable because this man did not know me. Yeah. When was it that? How many months? I gave birth in February. Oh, he 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 had ghosted me for a month, and then in March he sued me for a paternity test. Somebody knocked at my door. They're like, "Hey, you've been sued." I'm like, "Oh my god, what does this man want? Like, literally, <laughs> what does this man want?" So. I went to go get the paternity test in July, in June, and then her surgery was in July. And I told them, I was like, hey, like, I even told Aline, I was like, hey, I, I, I hope you understand. He hasn't been here, but if he wants to be in the surgery, he I think, like, dad, you, you know, know, he's the dad. Like, she's like, no, it's understandable. So he's like, okay, I'll go. Um, I texted him the day before, and he didn't respond completely. I was like, and at that point, I was pissed. I wasn't even upset no more. Yeah. I was pissed. I'm like, bro, how shitty of a dad do you have to be that you can't even go to your daughter's surgery? You know what I mean? And then um, Eileen went, obviously. we Mind up, you, when Melanie came out, like, just like no, her dad. Just, yeah, yeah. Like, there, was, yeah. <laughs> there was no way he could no, have been no, like, that. Oh like, my God, In the yes. beginning, she was like, I had my thoughts on who was a dad. No, Melanie came out just <laughs> and like. she still looks just like her dad. Yeah, yeah, just like her dad. Like, literally. Yeah. So at this point, we're like, yeah, like, we know who he is. Like, no, yeah. So Eileen went to the surgery or whatever and this and that. And then, obviously, he ghosted us for eight months. I didn't hear much about him. Even after he sued me, I didn't hear anything. Because I would text him. I'm like, what is this? Didn't text me back. He's, well, he did say, if you have any information, talk to my lawyer. He said, yeah. I was like, oh, he has a lawyer. Like, you could have just asked me. Yeah. 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 He, he sued you. That's yeah. crazy. He sued me. He went through the whole like, court process. Like, if you were process. random ass, I mean, you were, I guess, but like, again. But he could have just asked me and I would have been like, I'm that's like, totally fine. Yeah, like, I understand. I'm yeah, like, yeah, you yeah. have sex with her, like, get my, like, to just text her. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So, I think not until October. He his had, birthday. His birthday month, Um, he got the paternity test back and he was like, hey, I would like to meet Milani. So we met them. It was just me and Eileen. We walk in. His whole family's there. We're just like, oh, hey, we're Melania. Oh, <laughs> like, literally. So we just walk in. And then, yeah, we just met them. And after that, like, he's been the best, best dad. We co-parent perfectly yeah. fine. He takes her. We share 50-50. So okay. I take her from Wednesday through Sunday morning. And then Sunday morning, he takes her all the way to Wednesday morning. Yeah. So we just, like, co-parent like that. Lo bueno que cambió. And your daughter tiene ahora también, no nomás yeah, Aileen, exactly. pero su papá también oh, en su yeah. vida. How's that for you, you know? Being a mom, <laughs> you know, like, I want to know, ¿qué tú sientes? At first, it was hard to adjust, obviously. Like, I I knew I was going to be with Fabi. She had a kid. But it's hard to know, like, you know, at the end of the day, like, if Fabi's not here, that's my responsibility, you know? And at first, like, yo me llevaba Milani when Fabi used to work. And my mom, she was like, mijita, ten cuidado. Like, at the end of the day, like, if you get in a car accident, like... And they, her mom will cry every Yeah, time. my mom will cry. She's like, they will never forgive you, Eileen. Like, yeah. this is like... Because my mom has stepkids, so she knows how it was. And she will give me her advice that she went through with, you know, her stepkids. So she used to tell me, she was like, ¿Qué estás haciendo? Like, are you sure? Like, be careful. She's a baby. Like, she was. She used to tell me, like, it's precious touch. Okay. Uh, oro. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. like, yeah, like, she's, like, gold right now. You need to be careful. And yo también, everybody knows me, like I said, like, nobody would take me serious sometimes, yeah. like, seriously, because yo, I'm slow, I'm funny, I'm this. Like, people take me as a joke because I'm always <laughs> joking around. Pero, like, doing that, like, stepping up like that was really, like, it came natural, but it came with the help of Fabi, like, practice, and, like, my mom, too, helping me out with, like, this, how you do it, like, I don't, did I know? Yeah, the, it, her mother's instincts did kick in after like a, a couple months. It did take yeah, a while. Yeah, no, no, I didn't have no. A veces se queda dormida. I'm like, hello, baby, over here, like going back and forth. Yeah, you're asleep. Yo, like, like, oh, like, I couldn't even shower. I was like, baby, I'm so sorry. I was like, like I couldn't even shower because I knew Eileen would not hear her. Yeah. So I'm like, Eileen, no mom is. In like, the mornings, like I would never hear Melani cry. She was. Melani's like, in the living room. Eileen in the room. I'm like, hello, I'm like where's <laughs> Melani? Like, <"Mom>, stop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so. Fabi was like, she used to be like, how do you not hear? I was like, babe, I'm a deep sleeper. But um, so when I got a used to it you know it's just me and milani and fabio's three so when uh her dad milani's dad came around i got a little jealous i'm gonna admit because uh you know this was my family and i was like i know fabi had a share but i was like i don't want to share her i was like we i don't want her share either i yeah. did it it took a while for me to trust him to sleep over with her like for yes. her to sleep over like you know i'm really big on like men changing my daughter's diaper my daughter being around men or anything so at that point i again i don't know who this man was so i even told him i was like if you're gonna change your diaper your mom is the one your dad's not allowed like i would just be very specific and he he would understand it. he was he would respect the rules and stuff yeah. like that but um like i said that i was like a little jealous because i was like dude you were gone for eight months and the fact that you were here for a week and you have more authority than me for this baby, it sucks. I was like, dude, like, you don't understand the surgery. We went through a lot with that. Her, yes. like, like I surprised Fabi whenever she came home from the hospital. Yeah. Like, you weren't even here. You were dude. there through her whole pregnancy. Yeah, literally. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. everything. And I was like, you Whether know, it was as friends or as partners. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I was like, you just come and you talking about, you want to make these rules up. Like, not rules, but at the end of the day, like, I understand you're her blood. So you have that, like, uh, like you're top. Yeah. You're like, tú vas... Primero que yo. Like, literally, like, at the end of the day, if Milani, whatever, I can't even adopt Milani if I wanted to, because, you yeah, know. Yeah, because he has to give up his rights. But I've always made Eileen com comfortable. Like, I made a group chat with him and her and me. We discuss yes. about Milani all the time. Like, yeah. Like, I've, you're in the yes. comments. Yes. Yeah, and, like, yeah. probably told her I would always the make start, her, yeah. Like, this is Eileen. She was always there. This is my girlfriend. Even though he knew me. Yeah, yeah. My like, wife. Well, we're mm -hmm. wife now. We were girlfriends at the time. Oh, huh? yeah, we were. So, mm -hmm. she was, she was like, Eileen, he plays a huge part in Milani's life. Like, this is another a parent and he's always respected that like yeah. we've never had issues like even though he was never he was never there for the eight months whenever we threw her a birthday party uh he thanked my parents he was crying he thanked my parents i thank y'all so much for loving my daughter like y'all never had to do that he even thanked me he's like thank you so much eileen he was like looking at me my eyes like i know like thank you and he like, just gave me a side hug like, <laughs> yeah. I was like, all right. but he's like fuck you <laughs> no, yeah. no it literally is like that like yeah, yeah. he literally treats eileen better than he treats me like mm -hmm. they're nice he's nicer to her than me and but i feel like because he knows that you had a step up when he did it yeah, yeah like yeah, every yeah. time he wants to tell Fabi something he's like Eileen can you please tell Fabi this cause he's like we know like Fabi like I like it, entienda yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's like, you know how Fabi is he was like can you please talk to Fabi to like this is what I want or like this is what I think should happen or whatever and I was like yeah I'll talk to her like whatever <laughs> but uh, yeah we have a great relationship like we FaceTime we text like, obviously, we go out to breakfast together yeah like we went to the doctor's appointment he's like you wanna go have brunch nos pago y todo. <laughs> yeah, like, he's like I got it yeah, yeah, like, like, I was like hey you got two baby mamas now he was like hey. Shut up, man. But like <laughs> everything is good. Like obviously, obviously my jealous like it kicked in. But I knew how it was to like you know divorce parents and everything. I was like, Milani deserves her dad no yeah. matter what. I'm not gonna be that selfish to like be mad or like you know no like I'm comfort before. No, I never come first. Like to me, Fabi and then her dad yeah. and then it's me. But like even though they both know that that girl loves me, like she's always asking for me. Even with her dad, like I was like, do you miss me? He's like. Oh, we know she misses you. Like she's just saying your freaking name. Yeah, all the she'll time. like call her mommy or Eileen, so she'll mix it together. Or she'll like, be like Mylene, Mylene. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, like, What's her nickname? Right? Yeah, 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 yeah like, Mylene. But like, I appreciate that dude because like, but it, she loves Melanie like her own. Yes, yes. So me da mucha alegría escuchar because you know you guys have gone through so much, and the fact that you guys are in a place where you know you're good with your baby daddy, but then also she's giving you tu lugar sí. como su mamá because you've yes. been there from the start. It's amazing. No, yeah. Quiero platicar de un tema que obviamente es un poquito más sensible. Nos platicas que tu papá falleció hace tres años. Yes. Cuéntanos un poquito más de eso y cómo te afectó a ti. So my dad, it's going to be three years on the 15th of this month. So oh, on two days. In two days, right? Yeah. So yeah. the 13th? Yeah. yeah. So no, the 12th. So the 12th. So yes. on Thursday, right? Thursday would be the mm -hmm. 15th. Yeah. So yes. Thursday, 
the fifteenth, he makes three years. Hasn't been. It doesn't feel like that. But to the story, I've never really told anybody the story of how it actually went down. But in Houston, there was a freeze, like a huge freeze. We don't expect snow like that in Houston, so we were not prepared for it because it was it was pretty bad. Like, like no water. No. Was this when like the the snowstorm happened? Yes. yes. Okay. And it was all over TikTok. Yes. And yes. yes. Okay, yeah. okay. Okay. So we had a snowstorm. It was not like pounds of snow, but it was everything enough. was just frozen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the streets were frozen. We didn't have any water. We didn't have any electricity. We didn't have anything. And I remember it was Valentine's Day. I was excited to see snow. My dad had caught COVID. And I remember watching him. And it was just, it's crazy to me that my dad died in, while it snowed because my dad loves the snow. So it's, 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 it's crazy that that happened. But I remember just like going out, recording it. And then like going back to the room. I was like, oh, papi, look, like this is the snow. And I'm like, I remember he looked so sick and he was really bad. But the thing is, my gut feeling and my thoughts were just like, I don't think, it, I would get these thoughts that would tell me like, I don't think your dad's gonna make it, but like I would just brush it off, and like it was just it was just weird. Like you're being hopeful too. Yes, yeah, yeah. but it wasn't like people get sick. You know the flu, COVID was like COVID's like the flu if you think about it. You know what yeah. I mean? Like people don't take it serious now. Everybody just goes out without a mask. Yeah. So at that point, I'm just like he's just sick, but it was just so weird because my gut feeling and my mind were just like I don't think your dad is gonna make it. So I brushed it off, whatever. Again, no water, no electricity. So I'll just go on Valentine's Day. That's why I don't like Valentine's Day. Yeah. I don't I don't celebrate it. So um I go and I show him, I'm like, yeah, probably like like the snow, like you love the snow. So cool, whatever. Me and my brother are happy, we're all playing in the snow. Um the next day, I'm sleeping, there was no electricity, so my phone was like on one percent. It was like maybe one thirty. And my dad had gotten better, but then, then the next day, I guess he got worse. And I'm sleeping, I'm like one thirty, there's nothing to do, let me just take a nap. Yeah. Like, you know. I wake up around like 2.30 with screams, but I remember like, you know when you're dreaming and there's like noises that are happening in real life, but they're like in your dreams as well? Like you don't know whether it's yes. happening, it's really happening or it's in your mind. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. So I'm hearing screams. I'm just like, what is going on? Again, my grandma just comes in panicky and I'm like, what's going on? She's like, your dad passed, passed out. So I was like, okay, like if he passed out, I already knew my dad was diabetic as well. So at that point, I'm just like, okay, he's, his blood pressure or something, you know, he's going to be okay. Um, so I'm just like, I'm not thinking much of it. So I'm just like, okay, he's passed out. Let me just call 911. My phone's on 1%. There's no uh, signal. There's nothing. Like, La when, se fue yes. Yeah, so yeah. when I'm trying to call 911, they're like, answer, we'll connect for a few minutes. And then if I move, we'll lose connection. So I had to call like multiple times. And obviously, you know, when they get the first call, they can tell which like location it is. You know what I mean? But they kept asking me. So um, I'm not panicking. I'm like, okay, he just passed out, diabetic, and he has COVID. Like, he's going to be okay until um you know i'm a huge believer of god and so is my mom i think it was like until my mom was just like god why did you take him from me that's when it like automatically hit me and then i just start bawling crying i was like no mom like don't say that like <laughs> i was like don't say that like he's not gone like you know he's still here so i'm like uh, what the fuck mm -hmm. like no, you're good. okay no i'm sorry okay i was like no he's still here like so um he had to use the restroom but my dad is very big like he's he was like maybe like 200 something pounds yeah, yeah. so my mom is very skinny like 120 pounds like she carried dead weight so she had to sit him on the toilet like in the restroom and she gave him cpr and uh but at that time i was asleep until i heard the screams that's when i like you know i didn't go in i didn't want to see it i did not want to see him um at all because i when she said that that's when i knew i was like yeah you know it's like it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Said, he's dead like so I'm still trying to contact the freaking EMTs and they're, they're not answering and I'm freaking out. So um, I call my sisters, I call my siblings, everybody goes and like drives here. Mind you, the, the roads are frozen. So they can't even like uh, get drive. To you yes, yeah, as safely, quickly. Yeah. Yes. It took the EMTs 40 minutes to get there. My, my siblings got there before the EMTs. It took them 40 minutes. So it was 2.30 that he passed out and then around like maybe 3 or like 3.15 is when uh, they came. But... My sibling, my sister came with her um, ex-boyfriend now, but her, my brother-in-law at the time, they um, started giving him CPR. I still, I still didn't want to see. Um, so I remember uh, just watching from like, it was like the restroom and then the room. I remember just watching his feet lay on the floor. So I was just like, okay, whatever. Like uh, at, at that time, I was still hopeful because I'm like, okay, things don't happen to people. Like it's not going to happen to me. I'm not going to lose my dad. Like, you know, the EMTs are still going to come. They're still going to bring him back. So the EMTs get there. And it, feel, it felt like a movie. You know those movies where, like, the screen, like, um, extends out and everything's, like, so slow motion? That's how it felt to me. So, yeah. So, all I know is watching my brother punch the wall, crying, my sister on her knees, screaming. My mom is just bawling her eyes. But I'm looking, but I'm not 
understanding what's happening. Like I'm literally like just like um disassociated from yes. what's going on. Like yeah, it yeah. was there, but I'm not there. So I'm like everything was so so slow motion. I just remember like again, like in the movies, all I heard was like the the machine, like the beep. Like that's yeah. all I heard in my ear. It was like beep, but everything was going slow motion. So I'm like, okay, what the fuck? Like again, I was still hopeful. There was no way like my dad was gonna die. Like, How he, old was he? Fifty seven. Oh, super. Yeah, holy. he yeah. was. He was very super young. Holy. And my dad, like, I was my dad's little. I never girl. met him. No, yeah. and, it, and it really makes me sad that she, my dad would have loved her. But I was literally my dad's little girl. Like that man worked his ass off. Like he did everything for us and like anything even if it was his last twenty dollars and that's where I get it from. <laughs> if it was his last twenty dollars, he would like he would give it to me, no matter if he was broke or not. But anyways, yeah, so <clears throat> the AMTs just take him out. It's freezing outside. They just put like oh like a rag over him because he, he didn't have any any pants on yeah, or yeah, anything. Yeah. So um they take him they take him to the um the hospital. You know during COVID nobody's allowed to go to the hospital. So now at this point it's a waiting game. So we go um I'm in the car. I'm driving my sister back to my other sister's apartment. My mom's already there. And then we get a call, and it's the nurse. They're like, oh, hey, like, yada, yada, yada. Like, um, we're just going to go ahead and pass you to the doctor. I knew when you pass it to the big guy, that's that's how you know there's something going on. Yeah. So I was like, fuck. Again, I'm still hopeful. So um, the guy, the doctor's talking, and he's just like, hey, um... I just want to let you know that, like, your dad suffered from cardiac arrest. and But my sister was like, did he make it? They're like, unfortunately not. He did not make it. His time of death was uh, 3.30 p.m. Or just like, at that point, I'm not reacting. I already cried what I had to cry when my mom said that. So I'm looking at her. I'm just like, again, disasso- disassociated. So at that point, I'm just like, there's no way. Like, it didn't happen. Nah. I'm like, and I was so used to my dad not being around because he was a truck driver. So I always thought, like, he's going to come back. You know what I mean? So when he said that, I was like, damn, like, this is like for real, like he's dead. Like, so I call my sister, my sister's screaming. I didn't want to tell my mom because my mom was already heartbroken. My mom yeah. suffers from like heart issues. She had gotten a little, like a mini heart attack one time. She suffers from blood pressure and stuff like that. So I was scared to tell her because she doesn't take news like that because when she cries a lot, she like passes out or stuff like that. So I wanted, like, obviously, you can't ease in that news. It's, it's hard, you know what I mean? Yeah. So my mom knew he passed away. So when we went, I just told her, I was like, yeah, my like, he didn't make it. So she starts crying. And again, she starts having issues with her heart. So now we call the emergency for her. So she's being taken to the hospital with heart issues. We're just like, fuck. Like, like this can't happen. No, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, we're yeah. panicking even more. Like, dude, losing two parents in one day, no mom is like at that point, like it, no favor for us. Like God's not in our favor right now. So at that point, I'm just like panicking with my mom. My brother and my dad were the ones that were really freaking close. We were scared to tell my brother. My brother's younger than me. He's 22. So we were He's really... He one. was like 19. 20, yeah, he was 19 at the time. They were close. They were work together, take him to soccer practice. He would do everything with my like dad. father-son relationship. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, your dad only went to... Your, oh, his graduation. That's the only one he went to. He not, took off work and he, he was always working around yeah. us. Yeah, so he went to his graduation, which he was the last to graduate, which I'm glad he did. So I remember telling my brother, and my brother is not the type to cry. He doesn't cry. And that day, that was the first time I've ever seen my brother. Like, his knees gave out. He fell on the floor, screaming. Like, I didn't even know how to react. Like, I've never seen my brother cry like that. So I know, even now, like, my brother changed. Like, he went from being the baby of the house to, like, okay, I need to step up and be the man of the house. Yeah. He found a big boy job. He started taking care of us. Like, Take paying care the, of your mom. Taking care of my mom. He lives with my, my yeah, mom. Lives with him. Mom. Their mom lives with him. Yeah, yeah, like, he pays rent. He, like, you know, and he has about another kid coming. He has another kid. So he literally switched from, like, being the baby, the youngest of the house, to, to the being man. the man of the house, you know? Yeah. And I and I kind of feel like his 20s are being robbed from him. But it's like, I mean, I guess that's his mentality. And I feel like I don't even know who my brother is anymore because he, me and him are close. But now he's just, like, oh, like, man, middle, middle. Like, you know, he's just, like, oh, <laughs> man now. He's like, I got to take care of mom now. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that's, and no. And, and no, he's married, he's, too. Yes, and he's married, yeah. too. Yeah. And yeah. he's very... Very close to my mom. Like, yeah, he's a little mama's boy. boy. Yeah. Do you feel like, obviamente, pasa esto? Do you feel like that's where, you know, your alcohol problems came in? Yes. So, after my dad passed away, I completely buried him in the back in my past. Oh, I was man. like, I can't. I can't deal with this pain. Because at that point, I was going through a very abusive relationship. I had gotten cheated on on the rebound guy that I was with. So, and then um, I had COVID, too. I got COVID before my dad, so I feel like I was the one that gave my dad COVID. I did have COVID because my ex-boyfriend at the time, he was the one that had COVID, and then I got it, the one that was cheating on me, yeah. the manager. 
So um, I had gotten COVID, then my dad got it. And then, um, so it was just so much going on in one period of time, like from January to February. You lost yourself. I completely, yeah, I didn't know. I didn't even know who I was anymore. Yeah. I was very skinny too. So um, I buried my dad in the past. I forgot about him. I was like, I don't even want to deal with this pain anymore. You're mad at God. I was very, very mad at God. Obviously, I wanted it. I had talked about this, but I wanted to commit suicide. I told Eileen, I was just talking about it. Like I had like a... Uh, the Tylenol, the pills in my hand. And I remember like, like, okay, like I'm going to take these. Like, that's it. Like, I don't want to feel this pain anymore. But then obviously my family talked to me, like we made it through. And then, um, so I buried it in the past. I was like, if I feel, I feel like if I keep thinking about him, I'm going to feel more pain. Yeah. And my dad had this jacket that he always wore. I slept with it for like two months straight, like his jacket all the time. I couldn't sleep without it. The it blanket that, comfort, yeah. yeah. The blanket that my daughter has, the pink one, the light pink one is the one that my dad passed away in. That, that I always carry with me. So I never want to leave. Yeah, he literally died in that blanket, the yeah, light pink yeah. one that my daughter has. I know people might be like, uh, no, like it literally it, it like, brings you comfort. Yes, yeah. it does. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to not be able to sleep without it. So I pass it on to my daughter. And then um, after that, after I buried him in the past, I literally went on a binge, like a drink binge. Like I was drinking. Monday, to cope. That was, was your coping. Yes, yes, it was Monday through Sunday. I was, and mind you, I was just 21. So it was every Monday through Sunday, I was drinking tequila. Every day I was getting drunk, like every, every, every day. My mom was just like, you need to relax. I was like, no. like, And my mom knew it was because of my dad. And then um, at that time, like... I feel like my mom praying is the reason why I got pregnant. Yeah. Her <laughs> so, mom used to pray like... Te salvo tu. No, no like, yes, Dios, that's why I like, say bring that. Bring her something. Like, yes, I say this all the time. If, if it wasn't for your daughter. Yeah, if it wasn't for my daughter, I'd be dead. I tell that to everybody. And like, the dead, she like, said. Yeah, because like, I got I was drinking so much. So, yeah, I got pregnant. And then because of my daughter, I have changed a lot. And because of Eileen, I have changed completely. I did a whole 360 in my life. Yeah. Like, I am not the same person I was when I was 21. And I feel like now escuchando eso, you know, like, even just hearing you talk about about you know that right after your dad's passing you kind of like put that behind you you buried him and that gives off very flighter what is it called because i have that problem flight too. Or fight. yes yeah. to where i have that problem even now like i'm dealing with that problem now i have so much shit going on not just in my work life personal family everything you know like tienes un chingo de cosas to where when i try to explain it to people because people are like oh my god why are you not like caring about this or why are you not like yeah, dealing with this you. shit yeah, you know yeah. what i mean i feel like i've gotten to a point that i this is how i explain it like i will deal with what i'm dealing right now like right yes. now i am focused on this interview yeah, forget about even everything though it has else. so much yeah. going on and it's so sad because like for your instance obviously it was your dad's passing no puedo decir que es lo mismo conmigo mm -hmm. but it does create it's it's almost like your body like being like you know what it's a survival mode yes yeah. it is. I'm, I'm always on survival, survival mode. yeah and it's just so crazy because i saw my dad burn into ashes like i remember going into the 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 morgue at, would mm -hmm. you say like the morgue bro they do not care about humans they they literally put you in a bag. Like, you know when pigs yeah. are cold? Like, you know when they put them in bags, the pigs are cold? Oh, shit, like the ones that suck it up? Yes. Like, they do that. So, he wasn't obviously not yet, but, like, the bag was around him. And when you touch a dead body, it's like like a rock. Yeah, like yeah, they're yeah, yeah. And he was frozen. It was He was cold. How they was put that seeing that, you know? Um, I thought I was okay until I went there. That's why I'm like, y'all, yeah, that's why I suffer from so much trauma. I've seen She's, so much. And also, her mom raised her with tough love. Yes. So, like... So and when yeah. I used to be young, I, my mom was like, well, tough it up. You can't cry. Like, yeah. you will have bigger things to cry about. So that's I was, why that's, she is who she is. Yeah. That's why you were always like on fight or fight mode. Yes, yes. Literally. literally. So well, yeah, I rem mean? yeah, literally. So I remember my mom was like, okay, your dad always wanted to be like burned to ashes. So I was like, okay, we accept that. Whatever. So and we then wanted to be, sorry. Like, no, yeah, what? Like thrown in the beach. Oh, so right? thrown in the ocean. We kept him for a year until because i've always heard that if you don't if you keep the ashes they don't enter the gates of heaven yeah i've always heard that so my mom was just like he's never gonna be happy or peaceful so we just she threw them in the ocean by herself she had her moment because at the end of the day like, he was my dad but he was also my mom's best friend yeah you know her what life i mean partner. yeah that was yeah. her life partner they were together for like 20 plus years over 23 four years yeah yeah so i remember just going into the morgue and just watching him and i he didn't look like that's not the, yeah, he didn't look like my dad at all. It was somebody else. Like, he didn't even look like that. But just looking at him, I was just like, bro, like, he is dead. I just remember just him going and the fire just, 
And that, that was it. That was the last time I've ever seen my dad's body. I Sometimes I even forget what my dad looks like because I haven't seen him for so long. It puts into perspective how fragile life is. Yeah. Like, you know oh, what I mean? Like, yes. one day you had your dad and then the next, like, he was gone. Like you said, quickly no, in the yes. fire. You know what I mean? That's how I think now. Like, before him, I never thought anything bad could happen in my family. I was like, no, we're all going to live old. Now, I'm just like, life is scary. Life is so short, y'all. Like, I don't think anybody understands, like... I'm about to be 25. I'm almost 30. Yeah. If you think about it, when I'm 60, that's 30 years from now. That happens yeah. so quickly. 20 years, 24 years have already passed in my life. It's crazy when you think about it. Yes. Even us, like, as we're getting older, you're like, oh shit, I'm 25, 26. Bitch, I remember when I was 10. Yes. Yeah, literally. It like, goes by like Yeah, this. 10 years from now, we're going to be 35. It's crazy. Like, yeah. I know. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> for real. Like, that. yeah, like, that's crazy to think yeah, about. Yeah, and it, like, life yeah. goes like this. Like high school went by so quickly. School in general went by, went by so quickly. So life is very short. I feel like that's why I take one day at a time and I, I don't take advantage of it. Like I try to enjoy it as much as I could. Yeah. What is a piece of advice that you can give to someone watching at home that is currently grieving like a significant other or a parent or a best friend, whoever they're grieving, what's a piece of advice that you feel like helped you a lot in your healing journey? Well, I'm very different from somebody, but what I could say that something I could have taken by myself is let yourself feel the pain. Like go through that grieving process. Don't be like me and be like, you know, leave it in, the, leave in past. the past because the reason I'm saying that is because then in the future, when you think about it, it's going to be worse because you like, you know, you're you deal triggered. with, you get triggered easily. So I say, let yourself feel the pain. It's a like normal allow thing. yourself to grieve and think about like, okay, I lost this person. Let me like cry it out. Let me do this. And then let me miss him. You yeah. Like, let you miss. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's what I meant yeah, to say. Let you yourself miss, miss that person because at the end of the day, they're not coming back. And you know, you just, you just have to live with it. Death is literally like one of the worst things in life, but it's also life. So things happen for a reason. Don't do nothing bad to yourself because yeah. like life goes on and it sucks to say it. But like, I, I've never lost anybody, but yeah, like dealing with her pain, you know, like I said, that's why I had so much patience because I know what she went through. And it takes a lot to like understand that, but um, you just, life goes on. Don't think about, you know, taking your life away or like, why me, God? Don't be mad at God. Or, you know, everything happens for a reason. And let yourself feel those feelings because it's normal. You're human and you're going to go through a lot. Yeah. Like, it's normal. Yeah, literally what she said. I want to say thank you, you know, for being vulnerable. Y hablar de tu historia con lo de tu papá. With everything you guys have really shared, I feel like you guys have really gotten vulnerable. Y siento que ya en casita mucha gente can either relate or even it can help them understand you guys or your relationship a little bit more. Y en verdad que sí, lo siento por lo que te ha pasado. And I'm just really happy to see, you know, all, everything you guys have told us now. Y verlas a lo que han llegado hoy it really is really inspired you know because just hearing your guys' story today you guys have been through so much individually as partners que en verdad there really is you know un arco iris yeah. at the end of the tunnel yeah. you know yes. quiero platicar ya para terminar esta entrevista amigas porque yo sé que ahí andan en picadas queriendo más <laughs> pero this is probably like the longest interview I've ever had That's which crazy. I love I love like I love when the interviews are long because yeah, we've been I hate, a lot. No. usually they're like an hour and 30 yeah. Yeah. siempre miro comentarios oh my god I wish you could have kept oh, going really? and I know for this one y'all are gonna want to keep going pero estoy bien contento that it was at least like two three hours long yeah. ya para terminar voy a hacer una cosa que normalmente no hago uh -huh. that I'm gonna start doing on the podcast whenever we have couples y vamos a hacer como un tipo pop quiz mm -hmm. en esta situación lo que vamos a hacer yo aquí tengo preguntitas mm -hmm. um, que les voy a preguntar a ustedes and you guys have to answer at the same time and if your guys' answers don't match Set them on shot. Are you gonna give us a countdown? Like one, yeah, two, I'll do a three second oh, countdown. Oh, three, two, one. Si no, agarran the question right. Set them on shot. Ahorita vamos a ver qué tanto, a ver qué tanto está fuerte el amor. A ver, listas. Sí, sí. La primera pregunta. Who said I love you first? One, two. Three. I, I did. did. Okay. I did. How early on in the relationship? Uh, a couple months. Yeah, okay, five, six months. months. Yeah, five okay. months. Who is the biggest flirt? O sea, coqueta. Even this can be like maybe not now, but when you guys first met each other. Ready? <laughs> Una, dos, tres. I you. Mean, what? You are. You are. Bro, if hey, you know, you because everybody that knows Eileen knows Eileen's like the most friendliest, flirtiest if person. Friendly and flirty is different. You are the type like, yeah, come here. Like, I later, yeah. yeah. I mean, we got together because of you. You would never like, eras Nessia. You always wanted to kiss me. You wanted, ah, yeah, you know it. Sha, man. Sha, bro. Bro. Sha. It was you. Sha. You bro. know damn well, bro. Family and friends are going to watch this. You'll be like, Eileen, no mamas. No. Like, right, right, cheers. 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 
Mm-mm. Who is the better kisser? One, two, three. Me. Me. <laughs> hey, 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 that's too matched. That's too matched. Even right. though they said, they said me. Okay, so hey, hey, we don't want to take a shot. We love queens. <laughs> <laughs> You are gonna go home there. I thought I was gonna say yeah. you. Were like, I know, and I thought you thought I was gonna say you. That's wait, why you, you guys said really that. think you guys were gonna say each other? I thought she was gonna say me. Yeah, and I thought she was gonna say me. That's why I said me, so we can match and we don't have to take the shot. Listas, it's a, it's a, listas, son listas. <laughs> de pendejas no tiene nada. A ver, la próxima pregunta. Who's the one always saying sorry first? Una, dos, tres. I mean, yeah, yeah, okay. okay. Who is the early bird? ¿Quién se levanta temprano? One, two, three. <laughs> me. Let me get out this. Hey, we're gonna stop having to say me all the time. Oh, yeah. First of all, let Man, me. You only an early bird because when we have Milani, but if not, I'll wake up before you. <gasps> Always. You be up to. You be. No, oh, and the fact that people are gonna come and the people that know you are gonna know you're full of shit because first of all, I wake up with my daughter. I can be on a six, like two hour sleep. I'll wake up with her. First of all, you're still asleep. Second of all, you will always be late to work because you couldn't hear your alarm. I had to wake you up. No, 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 for real. Third of all, I can wake up if I have to wake up for work. Okay, yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. Damn. Última pregunta. Who is the better cook? Oh. <laughs> Una, dos, tres. I I don't What's cook. like your favorite meal that she makes? Oh. The shrimp, shrimp tacos. tacos. <laughs> I literally was watching you guys eat. What was the last video before this interview that I watched? In and out? No, 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 no. I think it was probably, I don't even know. Oh, the, like noodles the, yeah, the noodles yeah, with the shrimp? Yeah, she made that. That looked so good. The way you were like carapelando el pinche shrimp, I was like, se me antoja. No, yeah. I, 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 I like like cook. Cuando yo voy a Texas, voy a ir a su casa para que me hagan eso. I love to no, cook. No, she That's can the cook. Thing. Like, she does shrimp boils, Asian food. She does fried chicken she like, does everything de todo, amiga. Yeah. Una pinche chef. And, and, I, and i still want, want to go out to eat yeah, no literally <laughs> i'm like I, i'd rather eat out though no I, me that's I that's why i spend it. money but the, same <laughs> I, we eat out almost every day but there is times where like yeah 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 como mm. que te harta la comida chatarra i've seen you like, yeah i've seen you like Girl. me tojo like una sopa oh, me tojo cocinar. it's always the same shit tinga carne con chile <laughs> Or what else? Ceviche. I just did ceviche like three days ago. That sounds that so good. That does sound so good. Pero ya para terminar esta entrevista, amigas, I just want to say once again, thank you girls for coming on and talking to me and being vulnerable y en verdad platicar de su historia porque en verdad que yo me senté aquí and I enjoyed every single moment y yo estoy seguro que ya en casita también. Yeah, thank, no, thank you so thank much you so for having us. Literally, like, like This is one of our biggest, like, we made it. I seriously. made it, woman. No, 100%. Like, when you DM me, I was like, there's no way. I called her immediately. Yeah, I was like, like, babe, like we one, made it. Like, I was like, like we're going we, to LA. No, yeah. Yeah. And I've never and been, she's to never LA. been to LA. <gasps> yeah, this is my so first time. Because of you, literally, like, she's out here living her dream. You make a wish on me. But I love that. How's LA though? <laughs> Did you like it? I mean, well, you're not really in LA. No. Yeah, but, but we did. I mean, you got, landed in LA. Yeah. Yes. It counts. It's not what I expected, but yeah. I like Orange County better than I like actually Los Angeles itself. You know I feel like yeah. LA is very like crazy. It, it is. is. There's it not is. much to see. Yo vivo un poquito más calmado. And I, I feel like. I literally told her, I was like, babe, like LA, everybody lives out there, like the rich people and everything. But I was like, I like Like Houston, like downtown Houston, yeah, yeah. like it's más pretty, pero le dije, don't expect much. I try to warn her. But... Anyways, you guys, ya, vamos para otra pinche plática, ya queremos terminar este episodio. Once again, thank you girls so no, much thank for you. being here. Thank I you really so enjoyed much. this. Y también a ustedes, amigas, thank you guys so much for watching. Si las quieren seguir on their social medias, I will leave their links down below as well as on the screen. Y también no se les olvide to follow me on all my social media so you guys won't miss any future episodes. And with that being said, thank you once again. Oh, thank you. And thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye. bye. bye.